Hello everyone, welcome back to Star Trek Adventures, the USS Nighthawk and Starfleet Intelligence. This is the start of Season 3, and for a change of pace, they are back in the Alpha Quadrant, where they will be going up against Breen, Romulan, Klingons, their own government, whoever the heck I decide to make being the bad guy of the week. Anyways, um, Mr. I gave Mr. Helsing the opening log. And being the overachiever he is, he wanted to turn it into a bit of an opening scene. So, let's take it away, Mr. Helsing. The door opens to Commander Helsing's quarters. In walks Helsing, a little winded and a lot sweaty, wearing the all-black Starfleet physical training uniform with the obligatory white cotton workout towel slung over his left shoulder. He walks over to the replicator. Computer, one large glass of water. Cold. A little colder than last time, please. Ding! Thank you. Um, the new combat routine in the holiday was a butt, ki butt kicker this time. Let's up the difficulty for the next rotation and add more multiple engagements. A pause. Snow Squall activate. Make the visual appearance that of Breen and Zinkethi, but the physical stats that of Tholians in armor level 3. In Snow Squall. Resume. Acknowledged. Difficulty increased with additional multiple engagements as directed. Thank you. You are welcome, Commander. Um, let's do a personal log now. Um, computer, personal log, star date. What is today? Currently, current star date is 8326.2. Uh, thank you. Uh, personal log, star date 83286.2. The Nighthawk's been at Starfleet Intelligence's zero station for the last week while she's been undergoing needed refits and repairs. Our last time in the Lassai Expanse hasn't been too gentle on her. Try as we could to keep her safe. I'm excited about the upgrades, though. We're losing our electronics warfare suite to make room for advanced transporters that can transport from longer distances and even through shields. Hope Zell is up to that challenge. That's the main work, along with some streamlining and re rerouting of cables that should beef up security-related challenges. Only part I don't like is the debriefings, and we are being fully debriefed. They're going over every decision, every action in excruciating detail. I know we've danced on the edge. Interpretive dance would be a more appropriate phrase on the edges of the prime directive. But Starfleet Intelligence has always had more leeway in how far the Prime Directive could be bent, as long as it doesn't break. I feel justified in my mind that the actions we took were well within the limits Starfleet Intel has operated before. I mean, we delayed a militaristic empire from being able to commit hostile acts against the Federation while the Federation is occupied, it seems, here in the Alpha Quadrant with old friends. I really took the words of Commander Demos from Cerebus to heart when we first met, that the Nighthawk couldn't operate so loose that we stirred up trouble that the Cerebus would have to deal with. And now we aren't there to mitigate anything that should pop up while we are here, being grilled. It's been almost a month since we exposed the Vitar Gulag on their home planet's moon. From all reports I can find, what we did seemed to have done the trick, slowed down their fleet buildup and exposed the plight of those in the gulag to those on the planet appears there is a civil unrest over the treatment of those on the moon gulag i feel like we did some good there no no we did do good there computer pause snow squall activate any word on Kalen? apologies commander nothing new either on your official requests or from any of your ongoing search searches or inquiries through your 49er routine <laughs> Minor, minor, data minor, 49er. Uh, in Snow Squall, resume log. There's still no word here on where Keelan and the USS Orion are, or what happened to them a month ago when they were near Tholian space. The situation is still classified as need to know. And all I get is that she's along, that she along with the entire ship have been declared MIA. At least I was able to figure out they're near Tholian space when she disappeared. That's a start. Well, We'll see what we can dig up while we're here, I guess. C computer, strike that. Ah, Should have used Snow Squall there. Damn it. Well, we can't let our emotions rule us. Vulcans are right about that, in part at least. Oh, speaking of emotions, 
It's getting harder and harder to avoid Lieutenant Commander Latron in social situations. I still feel bad about what happened to him, and I can't help feel that I was partially responsible at some level. And to make it worse, those recent workouts I've been doing have shown me that I, me, right now, could have physically done that. He almost died, and I was the one that did that. Didn't do it? God, I hate the mirror universe conundrums and paradoxes. Are you looking at yourself when you look in the mirror, or is it them looking back? One thing the mirror me showed the real me was that I have to be more capable physically than I thought I was before. I'm going to have to be at the top of my game in all aspects if I'm going to get Kalen back. Those new combat routines were built around what mirror me could do in hand-to-hand, and I think I'm almost at that same level now. Computer in log, continue searches as before. Let me know immediately if you find anything. Being here at zero station might actually be useful. Snow Squall, activate. Computer, send to my pad a list of any contacts on board at zero station who had access to anything related to Kalen. The Ryan's last mission, the disappearance, along with their contact info, duty station, hobbies, vices, if available. Hi, Commander. Thank you. In Snow Squall. Uh, let's go ahead and shower, get some chow, and then find Kalen and the Orion. Helsey moves to the shower, pulling off his top as he goes. Cut scene. Okay. A good first start. So, uh, you have been back at the uh, Zero Station for a, about a week as the USS Nighthawk undergoes a significant amount of retooling, refit, and repairs under the shadiness of its dry dock. The USS Silent Vigil is in orbit, uh, Admiral Thomas Riker um, presiding, although they have been fairly quiet as to their purpose, likely just any ah, any attempts to intermingle with their crew or talk to them have been uh, polite, curt, but very short. <clears throat> is there anything that you guys would like to do? Because I believe, uh, just due to how players worked out, there is something that I would like to do, and that would be in the uh, mess hall. Where the Shran is eating his morning bowl of frosted oats, because uh, everything Andorians eat is frosted. But doom boom psh. Lieutenant Cassatt is with him, and in walks Mr. Helsing. Hey, Helsing, good to see you. You finally finished your your, your uh, morning workout. Why don't you come in uh, and, and join us? I'm eating a bunch of these um, frosted um, F, F flakes? Flakes? It's it's sponsored by some sort of um, earth earth striped creature. I hear they're great. You should come try some. I uh, kind of walk in, stumbling, it's like, oh crap. Okay, got this, and start walking up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, come on. You, you need to take a load off. You you've seemed really stressed re- the last few times I've seen you. I don't know something something on something bugging you. Come on, we got to pick up a bit of short thing, but yeah. uh, last time now. If you'll excuse me, Commanders, I believe that I am due to overhaul the plasma manifold in the in the port nacelle. Good day. Do All right, so help... don't don't forget. Remember, I, t- I told them um, when they're replacing things, make sure they get the uh, the color shifting paint this time. I know no one sees it, but it makes a difference. Lieutenant Cassatt just shudders ever so slightly. Yes, command. Yes, Lieutenant Commander. Yeah, so have a seat, Helsing. So what's yeah? What we haven't caught up in a while. What, what's been uh, what's been on your mind? What's been bugging you? Well, yeah, yeah, a couple things. Just some personal business, and well, one I've been. You might have probably noticed I've been avoiding you. A little bit. It did. It did cross my mind. You remember back when you were taken prisoner by the um, the Hobbit crew and they had Mirror Universe people there as well? Pretty hard to forget that one. Ah, crap. I can't 
help but feel I was somehow responsible. Oh, because you weren't there? For, hey, don't don't worry about it. I mean, you know, uh, the best no, man, that's that's part of it. But that was me who did that. Oh, you're, in some uh, manner. The trying to push to his face. Oh, you mean like the the the, uh, the black eye? God, hey, just because the the mirror version of you did that doesn't mean that that you could do that. Nah, you think at what level are they? part of us and we're part of them you know if, if you think back you know like the first time on the ship i was kind of played a little bit of tricks on you as i was testing out the beginning of what became operation crouching tiger hidden dragon yeah and the little jokes and things we played back and forth did somehow that feed into that what the mirror universe and how things go on over there do we even have that much control? Helsing, I think you need to, you need a dose of um, the the Tower of Fashran, as as I've I've uh, dubbed it. Sometimes you got to take the the lumps that come to you in the past, and you got to learn to uh, forget it and move on and look forward towards the uh, the next um, the next shining light in front of you. I mean, if I was constantly looking back at at all the things that exploded and and uh, left behind in my wake, well, uh, I. I'd probably let the um, people chasing me catch up to me at some point then. And trust me, that's a long list. <laughs> a very long list. Uh, yeah. It, I don't, you just can't help. Well, at least I, I can't. So just I guess that's why I've been kind of dodging and making sure you think you got better and, and everything. I guess things have gotten a little bit easier in my mind on it, but... Yeah, you nothing what. I've done here has been personal. Tell you what, if you if you feel bad about it, you know how you can make it up to me? Clean the plasma injectors with Lieutenant Kassat? Ah, uh, no, he's he's got that. I mean, he, he knows what I'm about. No, how about uh, we make sure it doesn't happen again in the future, and why don't, why don't we uh, pick up some, some sparring, sparring sessions, and you can um, teach me a few tips here and there. Not a problem, anytime. Just so that, uh, hey, you ever run into some mirror universe um, jerks? This time I'll be the one uh, laying them flat on their on their butts. Yeah, and kind of thinking about trying to set something up for everybody to to improve. We've been getting into way too many situations up close and personal. That's a great idea. You know, I I did hear about this uh, one great workout routine a while back, and it involved these um, fuzzy little. Um, uh, pieces of clothing that you would wear on your your arms and and ankles. We should investigate sometime. Might be good for the crew to engage in some um, cardiovascular activity. Master Chief Noel runs a mean aerobics workout. Well, I think that's something we'll have to investigate then. Like halfway through beta shift. That's an excellent suggestion. Notice. I don't go to it. <laughs> Not because I don't need it. It's because it kicks your butt. Uh, how bad could it be? Uh, yeah, I'll check it out. Oh, oh. You say that now. Ah. And the, but, the, the shine kind of blows them off. It's like, can't be that bad. The, let me know after you go to the first one. Oh, yeah, definitely. And Wooler approaches your table with a decanter of something blue. Uh, Mr. Helsing, you, or the both of you, can sort of smell the uh, ling, uh, an effect of a strong liqueur, even from here. Greetings, gentlemen. Uh, to prepare you for the day, I offer you um, an Andorian spiked lemonade. Ooh. Wait, Tenek Manor, you, ha you ate those frosted flakes with milk, right? Yeah, with some, some blue milk. Lemonade and milk. Oh right, you you humans have this this that weird um, intestinal distress over such things. Ah, uh, okay. Not to worry, Lieutenant Commander. I am perfectly aware of what can and cannot go safely down an Andorian gullet. He pulls out two glasses that you swear he wasn't holding a second before, and pulls pours the 
thick drink into it. He doesn't need ice as the glasses begin to cool and crystallize once the liquid is poured into it. Enjoy. And I hope that you have wow. a, a, a wonderful day, sirs. Uh, Worth, what's the temperature oh, of the uh, spice lemonade? It would be approximate. Um, the MS, ah, the material safety data sheets for the recipe have a serving, ah, have a serving temperature of about five degrees Celsius. It has an MSD? Of course, sir. All of, by Starfleet uh, bar and recreation standards, all drinks must come with material safety data sheets. How else are we supposed to ensure which drinks are safe for which species? You know, that makes perfect sense. I uh, raise my glass and say, well, as as us blue ones uh, say um, in honor of a drink, da bu dee da bu die, and uh, take, a, take a drink. And I'll take up my glass and as well. Uh, and on that note, is there anything people, other folks would like to do uh, during the interlude on Zero Station? Uh, I should... Uh, they should probably get back to researching uh, our Akashi uh, prisoner. Ah, yes. I forgot to mention the Akashi. Uh, Starfleet Intelligence has decided to uh, take possession of it for... Ah, sorry, for studying. And promises that it will be treated well. Cut it right down. Make sure she writes down a whole bunch of notes, dictating. Okay, this is its favorite temperature. It's like make sure you do this. It'll be more amicable to your need. She's gonna just write down a bunch of stuff for them. And send a care package, maybe. Their med staff is appears to be appreciated or appreciative of the information. The Akashi, the Akashi pet prisoner subject just hisses but you think it's pleased what what a kind pet prisoner we have yes yes indeed just hissing at us <laughs> no matter what we do <laughs> yeah well that's akashi for you so approximately uh uh oh, are we oh. Are we moving on nope. with the plot? No, okay. unless there's unless you have something to do. I apologize. I do have something to do. What would you like to do, Singral? I'd actually like to call Lieutenant Vand to my quarters. Okay. Off to the captain's quarters. We're talking quarters and not ready room? Yes, we're talking quarters. Okay. Lieutenant Vand, you are outside the captain's quarters. Not ex Captain, you call? Yes, yes. Come in, come in. As she enters the door, I'm going to quickly look to the right and look to the left to make sure no crewman is getting the wrong idea. <laughs> then I'm going to immediately <laughs> close the door. Uh, roll uh, insight plus command, please. <laughs> it's going to be difficulty zero. It's just going to generate some momentum. Do I have any applicable focuses? <laughs> undercover operations? Let's run, let's run undercover operations. <laughs> okay. Well, you got one success and one critical failure. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, the intelligence officer, uh, Calix Zale, notes the, uh, sus notes the suspicion or notes with great interest this interesting rendezvous and makes a note in her uh, logs trying to be covert on an intel ship anyways please continue well, lieutenant i'm glad you're here now i understand this is unusual and i want to assure you not to give you the, the wrong idea see i'm i in a little bit of a bind myself and i could uh i could use some help and I mean, since you are a member of this shift's senior staff, and I trust you complicitly, and considering that, considering your previous performance in the last few missions, 
I thought that you were aptly suited for this task. Well, thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> she looks behind the door and it's like, okay. Um, how may I help? So I'm going to say, come in, come in. And as she, as she, as we both move further into my quarters, I'm just going to point to the table. It's kind of, and it's just completely wrecked. And it just seems like there's a bunch of wrapping paper and gift presents and everything that's just thrown across the room. Am I supposed to clean the mess? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm having problem. I'm having a problem choosing a gift from for rear rear admiral bear at starbase 24. see she is a very you know considering even though she has the last name of bear i mean she's a remarkably tiny woman but she hits incredibly hard and the last time i was there she happened you know to shatter the last gift gift i gave to her just completely into into pieces oh goodness <laughs> yeah that was the first time around the second time around of course the next, she wanted to initiate some secret Santa the last time I was there on the station. All the Starfleet officers had to participate. And that was a long time ago. I was a young lieutenant. And peck, man, who do I happen to get as my secret Santa pal? Oh, you Her? guessed it. Of course. <laughs> so, all right, well. I'm I'm gonna necessarily I'm gonna give her something stronger. All right, I'm gonna give her some some nice nice exotic wool it's gonna be some nice ingrain it's gonna be of a place that she's been to before that i've heard her talk about in the past uh, the next thing i know she goes ahead and she takes it with her on patrol the next thing i know she did she tells me that shit is broken too was and it then she, metal it was no it was it was it was some pretty hardwood i don't remember i bought it off of some ferengi trader a long time ago i don't know what to get this girl Man, that was your I, problem. You bought it from a Ferengi trader. I didn't. I, I listen. I was young. I panicked. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I had to think of something to repress an admiral. And to be honest, I never liked Secret Santas to begin with. All right, I was terrible with them as a kid. And let's just say I have bad memories. Now here, here I am going again. I go spend eight months in the expanse. I go come back, and then I go get this message. <laughs> I, I go get this message in my ready room, and she just says, where is my present? I was unaware that I was supposed to give her one. I didn't know we were still continuing this bit. I don't know I don't know what she's, what's going on. I, but then she goes and tells me that, well, you know, you just need a female, a feminine touch. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. I, I'm not particularly sure I know what that means either, sir. <laughs> Listen, all right. You are the best science officer that we have on board this ship. And I say that with great elation. And I trust your judgment. Can you please help me pick a present? Yes, sir. I, I will do my best. All right. I'm going to go clean up this wrapping paper. You can go sort through the replicator logs. And believe me, by come hell or high water, we're Starfleet intelligence, and man, if she doesn't like her present, then I don't know what to do. Oh goodness. Okay, so whatever mission, whatever uh, storyline I had planned is now scrapped. We are this entire episode is now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, of course. Uh... So, uh, Lieutenant Vaid, as you are. As you leave the corridor, or as you leave the captain's office, and make your way to the security station, or the intelligence station, you're about to begin s sleuthing when a command from the uh, Zero Station is broadcast all over the, sh uh, throughout the ship. All senior staff of the USS Nighthawk are to report to briefing room, briefing room 4 for mission updates. Out. As everyone recognizes the sonorous and melodious tones of Director Chalmers. Does anybody choose to disobey? I will take your silence as no. Cool. On my way up to the briefing um do a quick 
check on a pad with a computer, see if there have been any updates. Uh, no updates. Uh, however, the um, entire uh, the entire um, blah, the entire uh, blah, the entire roster of the uh, Starfleet's seventh fleet has been downloaded, including names, starships, etc. Uh, what is interesting is how several of the Starfleet ships of it are currently listed as missing in action. Uh huh. Check. Make note of the names of those ships. Did it say in the same area, or just only in space, or just missing? Uh, still missing in action. Precise details are classified. Got it. Okay. And we find ourselves in a briefing room. Director Chalmers is standing at the podium, waiting patiently, or as patiently as he can. Even attempting to wait patiently, you can still feel the aura of impatience palpably emanating from him. You can, as you all enter, he does a quick count, making sure that all of you are present. Right. I trust, um, Captain, I trust that you and your crew have had a productive time here at Zero Station. Uh, yeah, some of us most definitely are making use of the time that we've gotten. I mean, it's it's been a while since we've been back in the Alpha Quadrant. I'm sure we're using it to a uh, great effect, as I keep thinking about my present. Good. Well, you'd better... I'm told that the retrofits will be completed within the next 24 hours, which is good, because you are due for dispatch to the planet Kate. That's C-A-I-T, not K-A-T-E. No, Kate's the name of my ex, and I will never associate that word with her ever again. Nope, you're going to the Cation homeworld. Well, specifically, coordinates nearby. That's where we lost half the 7th fleet. We're still trying to find them. But, due to the complicated nature of the situation, we had to wait for experts. And he shudders at the word expert, as two individuals take this cue to walk through the side door. We're not the experts. Feels bad, man. Yep, you're not the experts. May I introduce Investigator S. Scully and Agent Mulder of the Bureau of Temporal... Uh, of the... Yeah, of the Department of Temporal Investigations. They are here. They are here to brief you on the mission and what you can and cannot do while possibly in the past. Apparently, even I'm not allowed to know about this, so I will just wait to read your reports. I'm slouching down in my chair and looking around. <laughs> I look over at the shrine and say, time cops? This is amazing. Yeah, so the Department of Temporal Investigations is not an is not officially under the Bureau or under the jurisdiction of Starfleet, although they do have close ties to Starfleet. Uh, they've been in operation since the mid-22nd century, most likely as a result of Captain Kirk. Agent Mulder is a... He's a... An, uh, he is human in his late 50s, early 60s. Um, tall, willowy man. And Investigator Scully is a... Well, she appears to be a Vulcan, although you've never seen a Vulcan with red hair before. So possibly mixed lineage, or maybe it's a dye job. Either way, they are... They take their place at the podium. And Scully takes the lead. Captains, approximately two and a half weeks ago, the 7th Fleet tripped a... Quant a chroniton tether that appears to have that appears to be originating deep within Tholian space and heading towards the planet Kate. It tore open space time and they've lost half their fleet. We based on our based on the department's sealed records, we believe that it might be 
a might be triggered to a volcano eruption that has happened in uh, Kate's past, which launched the Cation species into the society that we know them today. We would we have requested the aid of the USS Nighthawk and Captain Singral specifically for this task. Well, that's ominous. May I ask? <laughs> Why me? Agent Mulder just looks, makes sure that there's, that Director Chalmers has left the room and that only the seven of you are present. Well, Captain, the Department of Temporal Investigation has uh, sealed vaults located on Charon, Neptune's moon. They are... They are sealed and only openable at certain star dates. Recent, approximately two weeks ago, one crossed its threshold date. An ancient painting, an ancient painting, of on Kate, approximately. Well, uh, our dating indicates that it is approximately 16. Or, sorry, is approximately 732 years old. Four days, 21 or four months, 21 days. Sorry. That would be approximately 1674 by Earth's calendar. And he pulls, he brings out a pad, definitely one that of a model you haven't seen before, and pushes the transmit button. And it is a painting, uh, you know, akin to the Mona Lisa or something like that. It is definitely old, and it shows an individual with an, a human, well, humanoid, with spots running down the side of his neck. And he appears to be dressed in, well, he appears to look like a wizard's robe. And he is holding a wand of sorts and blasting what appears to be a Tholian in an underground volcano. This is why we waited for you, Captain. We appear what? to be on the receiving end of a predestination paradox that the USS that you and the USS Nighthawk are deemed best suited for. So you're telling me that I'm already predetermined to go back in time to ancient to uh, the ancient Cation society and just completely just wipe. As a wizard? Well, age. Investigator Scully takes over. We suspect that there has been some artistic ramifications taken into account here. The individual who has painted, who's painting here, is... I did not write him down in my notes. Give me a second here. I'm usually much better at this. His name is Seraph, and he... Cation historians paint him as a philosopher, artist, painter, and an overall figurehead to what modern Cation society should be. We're not entirely sure how he fits into this, but this in this limited, this is one of the very few instances where, if you need, where it is recommended that you make contact in some form with a individual with this individual and he may have to witness you fighting a tholian <laughs> forgive me agents I, I i understand that this is potentially very serious but i, I can't <laughs> this is a really good painting can i get a copy well i mean clearly i'm probably going to get a copy but i mean <laughs> this, this is detail I should be taking this more seriously, but I mean, honestly, I mean, wow. Uh, okay, okay. The, the, the high, the high, the high is coming down now. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of worried, kind of concerned now. Sir, can I ask a question real quick? By all means. Um, the agents, is this anywhere where the USS Orion disappeared? Yes, um, the USS Orion and several other ships of the Seventh Fleet were part of the group that triggered this chroniton tether and all they, we've lost five five of the ships uss formidable the zhang hen the orion 
the Serac, and the Greenwich. Hope, we are hoping to understand their fate once the USS Nighthawk is properly equipped and can travel this time, whatever opened, or the time rift that's opened, safely. You said they triggered? Yes. We're not... It's... It was quite by accident. Um, it was the USS Archangel that discovered it, and they ordered the USS Sarek to investigate. It appears to be a tight beam transmission of chroniton particles emanating, f sourcing from th deep in Tholian space to the planet of Kate. Using temporal... Once the DTI was notified, we investigated with temporal sensors, determined that the it is going to a fixed point in Kate's past. We are uncertain of the ramifications. However, uh, the Tholians must be... The Tholians... If there is Tholian interference in it must be negated. <laughs> okay, so uh, specific specific personal jokes aside, if we know the individual who painted this in the past, and considering that myself and the Nighthawk are supposed to go back to this point in history to begin with, assume allegedly, then is there any other resources that we could draw on? Did this fault? Did this philosopher have any family? Do we know exactly the area of Kate where he lived? Is there any other clues that are on the planet that are already available to, for us to investigate? Yes, Captain. Um, we believe that this the individual was, or he lived alone, and to our to the best of our records, and let's face it, due to Kate's history around this time, a lot of it is lost. Uh, Seraph had no family. But we do know that he lived in the village of Asserlop. And we suspect that the image of the volcano preed is a reference to the massive eruption of their volcano mountain, Wasar Top, which basically plunged the entire Cation society back into the Stone Ages for a generation or two. Okay, well, it's kind of, I understand that, you know, at least Starfleet t tells us and kind of drills into us for the best of our, our knowledge is, you know, try to stay out of historical events. And I'm slowly coming to terms with the fact that you two are telling me to go cause one. But I'm just going to spitball out here, considering that this has not taken place yet, relatively speaking. I watched the ancient Earth films, like Back to the Future trilogy. So I feel like if we did go there, I probably would have tried to leave some sort of historical mark to, that I would probably be able to find in the future to the best of my ability. Do you recommend us to go trigger these events immediately? Or will you allow the Nighthawk to go to Kate first before we go try to trigger this anomaly? By by triggering the, if the village of Wasar, ah, if the village, the village of Asarlop is located on the uh, slopes of the dormant, at the, t uh, at this time, dormant volcano of Wasar Top, we, be we would like to, we believe that if there's any clues in the painting, or if there's any clues at all, they would be left in the painting for you to find, Captain. It's, the because approximately three years before this painting was created, Wasar Top blew up and would have wiped out any historical evidence. Oh, well, that's convenient and unlucky. Very. I'm going to be honest. For even though it just it just definitely seems like that I play a large. Wouldn't it be better if I actually took a step back at events? If assuming that this is a predestination paradox and these things are going to happen regardless, it probably seems that if I'm leading this mission, I won't necessarily make the best judgment here. I'm going I truthfully, 
I, I'm most of the time confident in my command ability, but if we're going to start talking about relativity into this, honestly, temporal mechanics was not my strong suit. But wouldn't you have said that anyways uh, to try to get out of it? Agent Mulder steps to the fore. I understand your hesitation, Captain. Quite frankly, none of us at the DTI are happy with this discovery. However, our policy with these sort of predestination paradoxes, especially when we're on the other side of them, is to ensure that they can play out as close to historically accurate, or as historically, well, as historical as possible. In this instance, we have evidence that Captain Singral of the USS Nighthawk was on the planet of Kate, and the Federation standard of there's Federation standard year of 1674. Therefore, it's our departmental mandate that we attempt to maintain such a maintain that such things occur. Now, we're not entirely sure how things play out. This is all we have. Most of uh, Seraph's writings were quite esoteric, and the few the few uh, verses that he talked about the night of the explosions were very bare bones, probably due to the because he knew he would be laughed out of existence. Sir, the truth is out there. We really need to check this out. <laughs> well, one way or another, that seems like that's going to happen anyway, so... <sighs> oh. I'll, look to, I'll look to the DTI agents, and I'll look to the rest of my crew, and I'll sluggishly say that I guess there's no time to waste. Or do we have all the time we can waste since we're going back in time? All right, time to go. We're gonna get a lot of time jokes out of this. We're gonna we're gonna mitigate them as much as possible. If it was happening to somebody else, I'd find it hilarious. But it's not. <laughs> the Department of Temporal Investigation's stance on time based puns is well known. Uh, oh, quick question. Yes. How exactly are we supposed to get back? Well, it I, is... how, I want to know how we're going to get there first, and how we can get back. The rip in, uh, the, once they tripped the quantum tether, uh, it opened a small rift in space time, which leads back to, uh, which leads back 732 years. It is most likely that the ships that fell through it were ill-equipped to handle the time stream navigation due, due to their unpreparedness. Agent Mulder is an expert on temporal navigation. Um, once we are on site with the rift with you, we will uh, program your helm accordingly. Oh, you're staying with us. Mulder speaks up. Well, of course. We are not going into the past without some proper, um, without proper oversight. I think it would be helpful, most likely, if such a thing already happened anyway, to probably, wouldn't it make more sense to, no offense to the rest of you, but to get Haitian DTI members to assist with us if we were supposed to go to this planet? Uh, sadly, Captain, the, there are two Cation DTI members currently on roster. We maintain a fairly uh, light uh, presence. One is currently in the Delta Quadrant, continuing to clean up Admiral Janeway's snafu. The other one is not scheduled to reappear for another, and he checks his chronometer. Um, six years, four months, three days, and 12 seconds. That's a lot of overtime. Yes, his vacation benefits are going to be insane. Well, thank you for bringing this to my attention. 
even though I do find this incredibly incredulous, but hey, I mean, I'm a, I, I, I'm a secret agent in space. And so, I mean, what else, you know, I, I just scoff. I, I just leave the room, honestly. <laughs> I just I just leave at this point. Uh, just one more question for you, for you agents. Yes, Commander. The ships, we're going back in a controlled manner. Would those other five ships going back in an uncontrolled manner be able to survive such a trip? We are uncertain. Um, we have been unable to raise any secure communications with them, nor have we been able to... Uh, nor are we. Nor have we recorded any historical evidence of their being there. So, until we can actually get eyes on the ground, it's going to be very difficult. We don't know. And if they did blow up back in the past, we'd recognize debris currently in that area. Over to Never mind. My, my, my head's not, hurting not, now. Not really. No, we wouldn't. <laughs> that would be long dissipated by now. Oh, absolutely. Solar winds and yeah. whatnot. Uh, Captain yeah. Grohl, as soon as you exit, uh, you see Director Chalmers attempting to listen through the soundproof doors. He makes a uh, quick adjustment to his stance. Captain, that was brief. They have asked for permission to join the USS Nighthawk for this mission, naturally to ensure proper uh, fostering relationships, I have agreed. I just look at Chalmers, and I just I shake my head, and I said, what did you get me into? I have no idea, Captain. I look forward to reading your report. Uh. And as much as I would like to continue this for a little bit, I do require a bio break. Uh, so let's come back to this at uh, five after the hour, and we will pick up here. Sorry for the first. Sorry for the short first. And we are back. So we are going to cut over to the bridge. Unless... Before we do, yes. I'm just really curious with the two uh, agents. Um, are they bringing the painting with us? Can. Uh, yes, the painting is kept with them. Okay, so I can't do experiments on it. <laughs> uh, no, you are. Anytime someone even looks at the painting, they are very protective over it. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, it will take. Okay. Ru oh, I'm sorry. No, no, that's all. I was curious. Okay. Uh, it will take roughly a one and a half weeks to, uh, sorry, just one week at full warp to get to the tear near Kate. Is there anything you would like to do on the way? Actually, just because I find it humorous, if uh, Lieutenant Vaid, if you could please roll me a uh, insight plus science, please. Alrighty. Um, Do I get advantage? <laughs> um, if you have a focuses on intelligence operations, uh, Starfleet personnel, uh, computer, uh, Starfleet databases, stuff like that would work well. Uh, ship can assist with computers plus science. Roger that. Ooh, three successes. Okay, uh, that was a difficulty of two, so you get one momentum out of the deal. So, um, yeah, it was Admiral Bear, correct? Or Captain Bear? Yes. Admiral Rear, Bear. Admiral Bear. Uh, so Admiral Bear is, um, Admiral Bear has varied interests and appears to be very much of a flavor of the month admiral when it comes to personal activities. Uh, however, family does seem to be very important to her, as she has sired two separate families with two different husbands. One passed and then 
you know, as one does after the passing of one loved one, eventually you might move on. And so she has two, two families. Uh, the older one, or her first one, is under her husband's original name of Duval, and as such doesn't show up under cursory searches. So possibly that might be a a good lead for a gift. Alrighty. Does anyone have anything they wish to do other than, you know, find out more about Captain Singral's uh, secret Santa problems? Doesn't sound like it. Okay. So we are going to cut. So sadly, this is a scene change, so that one momentum you got, you now lose. Aww. <laughs> So you are approaching a the hole in space. It is being guarded by several starships from what remains of the Seventh Fleet, the USS Archangel being its flagship. Uh, you would remember the USS Archangel as being under the Admiral command of Admiral uh, Takeshi Yama Yamato. So the Archangel wasn't one of the ones that disappeared. Nope, it wasn't. But it triggered it. Well, it and yes, it and members of the fleet, yes. How do you wish to approach the situation? Well, I'd like to make sure that we can, uh, if we haven't already, to make sure we got the rest of the starship's logs and they're all, all the rest of their sensory information since before we arrived. Of course. And I want to make sure that we're clearly just linked up with them in series. Uh, After yeah. that, yep. go ahead. Uh, yes, you do gain the information of the time vortex from the uh, USS Archangel and its uh, fellow ships. Do the rest of the ships still have all of their personnel, or was it? Is it only obviously the ship? Was it only the ships that were lost that are that are missing? Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. I want to make sure that everybody's where they are, mm -hmm. at least on their respective starship. Uh, you are assured by the uh, Department of Investigation that everything appears to be temporally intact for now. Captain, do we know what the Archangel and the rest of the fleet were doing out here? Just regular patrols and they tripped on it? Were they doing something else? Trying to play our game? Uh, that would be an insight plus insight plus con? Insight plus security? Either of those would work. Uh, insight plus con or insight plus security? And either one person can assist, or the ship can assist with computers. Con. And this will be a difficulty of one. You want to take it, Cap, or do you want me? No, I'll, I'll go ahead and take it. All right. Um, I believe go. you have pattern recognition, which would work well here. Mm -hmm. And I'll assist with the ship. You said the ship was uh, computers plus con. And that's three successes already, so that's two more momentum. And there's a third momentum. <clears throat> uh, the Seventh Fleet has been deployed al along the Boli or along the Federation border with the Tholians uh, for s uh, some time. Uh, they did assist, of course, with the strikes against the um, the, the transwarp network that the Tholians attempted to, to tap into. Uh, about six months ago now, I believe. Maybe four. Either way, it was a while ago. And they've been out as a consolidated show of force and protection. Uh, this area of the Federation is a bit sparse for member worlds, but the member worlds still require protection.
Okay. Okay. Um, as as you are, are you approaching openly or are you being cloaked? Or not cloaked, active camouflaged. Whoa, you are very quiet there, Bashir. Oh. I'm pretty sure that's not on my end. Cap's back. No worries. Yep. No, we'll be. Uh, no, we'll be. Uh, we won't be approaching under under cloak. We'll be approaching normally. If, if we're just going to meet up with the seventh, and they're already here, then hey, if I'd assume, I'll assume that the route is cleared already. So there's no reason to to cloak our way through here. All right. Uh, Ensign Rani is the first to say, Captain, we're being hailed by the USS Archangel. Put him through. All right. And it would help if I was on the right screen to do this. Standing at the front of his bridge, attempting to look uh, dashing and in control of the situation, even though his emotions betray him slightly, is Admiral Takeshi Yamato. Captain Singral, it is good to see you again. Likewise, Admiral. Um, I wish it was under better circumstances, though. As do I. Do you believe that this is the Tholians finally attempting to strike back? I think a lot of what is going on here is yet undetermined, and I hope to uncover that. But I won't rule it out, necessarily. I understand. For what little it's worth, we've attempted to peacefully hail the Tholians, but they have not responded. Typical. <laughs> well, at least you were courteous. But out of, at, as of this moment, I would appreciate it if I would at least advise it to at least cease all external communication with the Tholians. Still, it's probably best for us to figure out what this thing is on our own time. Understandable, Captain. I will... I am... For, I am forwarding the USS Xerxes intensive scans to you now, in case you might be able to pick up something that we have not. Every little bit helps. Circle out. He nods, and the connection gets cut. Okay, well, I'd like to do a scan on the rest of the ships that remain of the fleet here. Okay. And I'd like to see if there's any other lingering chronotons or temporal actor effects or things like that. I understand that everybody, at least crew-wise, is where they're supposed to be, but I want to see if there's any lingering effects with the ships here at large. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be an Insight plus Science scan. Uh, sensor operations, temporal anomalies, that sort of thing would be useful here. The ship can assist with sensors plus science. And this is going to be a difficulty of three. I'll take this. You are still very quiet here, Bashir. Okay, well, that's a success from the Nighthawk. Yeah, is Vaid rolling by chance? Who's, oh, crap. who's rolling this Insight Science? Alright, I'll do it. Alright. <clears throat> no! <laughs> okay. So can okay. So your your scans uh, don't pick up anything of note, and as you begin to forward them th into the anomaly itself, uh, the anomaly begins to flicker and waver. Um, Investigator Scully, who is set up at one of the auxiliary panels, uh, immediately turns. Captain, your captain, your ship is not configured properly for this for the temporal scans as per our directives. Who is, what is, how, eh, bleh. 
Lieutenant Commander Thashran needs to be precise down to the nearest micron. <laughs> well, did well, you get that, Thashran? They're, yep. uh, they're, they're critiquing your work. <sighs> Come on, this is a piece of cake. As long as they don't criticize his dance moves. Ooh, then they're they're in for for a licking. Uh, well, at your convenience, please, and make the necessary modifications. All right. Uh, what do I need to roll for this? Uh, this or is going I... to be, um, this is going to be a control plus engineering roll. Uh, ship is going to assist with structure plus engineering, and the difficulty is going to be a two. And, uh, and as a you know friendly reminder, you, you can always buy threat or complications off by giving the GM two threat. Good point. And that is, I completely forgot about that. That is two successes from the USS Nighthawk. And if, and that is two successes from the Shran. So that is two more momentum. Uh, the Shran, you're able to find where you've. Uh, got a wire or bio neural gel pack crossed and are able to make the adjustment but it does eat up a bit of <laughs> time and the anomaly appears to be getting slightly more unstable scully or Mulder takes spins around his chair uh, and I, here i thought that the sensor arrays on these intelligence ships were supposed to be far more sensitive than those of the regular Starfleet ships. Still, we should be able to get through it. Just might be a bit more of a bumpy ride. That's all. You know, we have been at Station Zero for at least a week. I mean, if you wanted these modifications done ahead of time, it would have been nice to inform us. We did, Captain. Your chief engineer assured us that everything was... How did he say? Yeah. Uh, Everything was smooth. Well, I got no way to come back to this. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sending co I'm sending coordinates and deflector modulation frequencies, as well as the now that we have up to up to date information on what the anomaly is doing, I'm just finishing up the modifications to the temporal shield algorithms should be able to and he pushes the send button if you could please take care of this and make the modifications which reminds me where is Captain something like this Mr. Helsing you realize you should be on the bridge and Mr. Zon Zonar should not correct there figure I had time hey now time is not on your side Okay. Just keep slipping, slipping, slipping. Into the future. Yep. Okay. So, while all this is getting done, I'd actually like to uh, get up from my uh, captain's chair and talk to Toby for a moment. Not privately, just oh. still here on the bed. Mm -hmm. totally. So I'm going to set up and walk over to him. I'm just like, well, this is going to necessarily be a unique experience for us, whatever is going to come down. And I'd like to have a request from you. And this entire experience aboard this garden has been a unique experience. How is this going to be any different? There is going to exist a very unique possibility that the Nighthawk and their crew are going to come to a planet which we are pretty, we pretty much are, as much as we know from history, we are going to fly in blind. And I'd like to see if there's a way for us to leave any specific uh, herbal or uh, agricultural markers for us that could last through history. And since you have such great experience with gardens, and I'd like to find a way to mark our presence in a relatively obscure way, is there a way that you could create a garden that doesn't interfere with the local fauna of a planet that could be kept relatively isolated for let's say seven eight hundred years 
and a distinctive marker, so if we needed to come back to return to it, we'd know where to find it. That is a very peculiar request. Usually gardens tend to grow and thrive. You are asking for a garden to potentially wither. But potentially wither, yes. But out of, out of respect for all that you have done, we shall attempt to do so. This garden will find will attempt to find a uh, what's the uh, a sanitized area for us to set up a unique habitat, one which would hope which would ultimately not be interfered with. That's all I ask. I don't necessarily wish for it to die, but I understand if it doesn't have constant maintenance, it's a possibility. As long as it can be kept relatively self-sustained, but uh, not interfere with the rest of the fauna on the on the planet for as long as you can give me, is that's all I ask. This is a complicated request, Captain. We sh this garden shall attempt to abide. Well, we're about to live in unusual times. Okay. We don't have a data, but we have a Groot. So if I could, <laughs> <laughs> if I could get a, uh, if I could get some uh, chronological marker through plants, I'll take it. Hey, whatever works, man. Whatever works. Okay. Um, let's hear a sound test quick from Bashir. How you doing, buddy? Testing, testing. That's a little... That's not bad. Even a little louder okay. is better than that. But, good. We're moving in the right direction, volume-wise. Okay. Agent, Mul Agent Mulder and Investigator Scully are looking to the captain. And Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to configure the shields. Uh, so this is either going to be a um, control plus security or control plus science. And the ship will assist with structure plus security. And this is going to be a difficulty of two. I have a 10 to the fifth power. You have 50? Nope, sorry, that is 10,000. 10. Well, 10 to the fifth power. Control yeah. discipline. Yeah. Control security wise. Mm -hmm. Anybody beat that? that <laughs> I can't. Yeah. All right. Alright, uh, who's got the ship? And who's got the ship to help for Helsing? I can it's roll for the ship. Two, su sure. two successes? Yeah, uh, yep, it's a difficulty two. Is it sensors? Uh, it is structure plus security. Structure. Yeah. Go. There's three. There's another one. So that is four successes, so you're maxed out on momentum. Which is good, because you might need it. Anyways. Uh, Helsing, you believe that you have configured the shields precisely. Hey, Agent Mulder, do you got a minute? He stands up and heads over to your console. I think we got the shields... <laughs> Set correctly. He takes a look over your shoulder, nods silently to himself. That looks, that looks well within parameters, Commander. And he'll wander and back. I, and I snicker a little bit. <laughs> Got a minute. <laughs> he sits down and goes, "Wait a second. Ah. Hmm. Uh, Jefferson Davis turns on his seat. Helm reports ready, Captain." <laughs> well, agents, do you advise that we warn the fleet about what we're about to attempt? That is probably is a good idea. Advise that they wait um, two light years away from the anomaly, just in case. All right, then. Well, I'll go kindly dispatch this from my chair to Admiral Yamato. Admiral Yamato acknowledges, and within seconds, the fleet begins to move away from the tear. I also advise them, j j just in case, if any Tholias do attempt to interfere, that at least at this point in time, 
this uh, this anomaly is being researched by Starfleet, and use your best judgment, i.e. keep them away. I look forward to it if they try. Very well, then. Then I'll go ahead and uh, calm us all hands. Well, we're going to prepare to en engage with the anomaly. Secure your stations. And on command, anyone sitting down immediately feels restraints as seatbelts begin deploying. Ooh, is that part of the upgrades? <laughs> You'd think by now there'd be some department um, <laughs> safeties. Yeah. OSHA. Yeah. Also, we get seatbelts, but we still don't get circuit breakers. <laughs> I mean, you know, progress is a slow mistress. And if someone could please take me or get Jefferson Davis to roll the um, potentially the first roll, this is going to be a control plus con. Uh, the ship is going to assist with engines plus con. And this is going to be a difficulty of. Well, it was going to be difficulty three, but because you failed, it's now difficulty four, and I'll spend threat to increase the complication, or increase the difficulty. I will go ahead and grab Davis if nobody else does, and I will use our the momentum to buy an extra die. All right, or two, or two, or two, or two. Or two. Nighthawk, Nighthawk crapped out. Nighthawk, not so, so good. Control, con, you said? Control plus con, yes. At 4d20, let's go here. <laughs> okay. Oh, ho, ho. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. So that is one success and two... Uh, critical failures. <laughs> so we went back in time, but we went to the wrong time. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks to Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah. me too. It's just. They did, did say 1600 BC, right? <laughs> uh, the so, Agent Mulder <laughs> described that or predicted this would be a bumpy ride. Um. This is a severe understatement. Um, I get to roll some challenge dice now. Um, and get to see how bumpy it is. Now let's see, that was two crit failures. I bumped that up to there. Okay, so the ship suffers a grand total of eight stress, which is enough for a breach. And what system breaches, you may ask? We're about to find out. That would be structure. So there's a breach to structure, which means I get to roll a challenge dice. And see what happens. Oh, that's a shame. So. Uh, sparks fly, the ship breaches on its structure and takes a grand total of eight points of damage to its shields and it's um, so, uh, mo thankfully all named personnel are perfectly fine a couple of the uh, NPC, a couple of NPCs background characters are reports um, severe ca ah severe injuries. Dr. Coax is currently working on it. So, the ship will emerge from its uh, tear in space. A little worse for wear. Uh, leaking atmosphere from one of its uh, leaking atmosphere from two of its decks. Are the emergency force fields in place? Thankfully, the emergency force fields hold. Um, but the sh until the ship is fully repaired, it is not advisable that you go back through it on the other side. Oh, man. I love this. 
So the uh, USS Nighthawk emerges uh, with about as much grace as a belly flopping person um, ent enters the water. Uh, thank, and you and ah, you emerge on the planet of or shortly outside the system of Kate. And once everybody picks themselves up and reorients themselves, Agent Mulder does a quick check of the sensors and looking over to Investigator Scully, they nod and say, "Well, Captain, I apologize. My coordinate, my data must have been off, or you know, my data must have been flawed." I shall recalcul I shall perform new calculations before we enter again. However, we do appear to be here at the present uh, the proper time. And so, whoever's remaining in Astromatrix, I want to make sure that the stars are where we expect them to be. I know Mulder said it, but uh, you know, got to double check, triple check. Yep. Ah, uh, fair enough. That would be um, the astronaut astronomics officer Leva Akor, occasion by chance, and she will begin running her calculations. Uh, Lieutenant Vaid, you did, it's not hard to pick up the uh, re, the uh, signatures of five Federation starships. Up, they are in a moon, or they're operating at the extreme range of the system. At uh, one of the moons. By extreme range, do you mean like on the outskirt? Uh, yeah. So if this was a system, or if this was Earth, they would be at Pluto. Okay. So at this point, sorry, sorry go, ahead. go ahead. No, 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 no. Well, actually, you first. <laughs> Captain, we've picked up the signals of the starships. You got the Orion? That was one of the five, right? Do they have life signs? I'm, I'm sorry, Captain. Con concerned about uh, people in particular, Mr. Helsing? Aye, sir. Faye's <laughs> just kind of shocked and just like, do I go ahead and <laughs> try to figure this K out? Kalen's on board the Orion, sir. Well, Lieutenant, what is the status of the Orion? That would be an insight plus... Let's mix it up. Insight plus engineering because you want to learn more about the ships. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, insight engineering, um, the ship will assist with uh, sensors plus engineering. Uh, difficulty of two, just because you're still quite a ways away. At this range, it's difficult to say. Uh, you're able to pick up that they're there, but you're still too far away to pick up any fine details. Can we hail them? Uh, you can try. You're very, it's still very far away. My voice or the ships. <laughs> uh, the their ships. You're you're coming through okay, okay now. Okay. I was I was curious when you said that. I'm like, uh, okay. Uh, let's try to hail them. Uh, well, just because I want to see if this will actually work, uh, this is going to be a uh, presence plus. Nope. Control plus engineering, and the ship will assist with communications plus engineering. And I'm because you are still far away. This is going to be a difficulty of two. One from the Nighthawk, and let's. What does Bashir roll? Working on it. Working on it. Is it possible to assist him? Uh, the yeah, Nighthawk's the already doing so, I'm afraid. Got it. No, that's all good. Yep. Yeah, that would be three. Uh, three successes, one momentum, and one complication. And the complic... So, yep, I know what the complication's going to be. 
I hail the Tholians. <laughs> mm. Ah, you. It is a very staticky, a uh, very faint connection. However, you are able to make contact with one Captain Centaur of the USS Sarek. This this is Captain Centaur of the US of the Federation starship USS Sarek. We regret that if we are in space that is claimed by anyone. Our arrival here was unintentional. We seek to make repairs before leaving. USS Sarek. Well, making sure. Is this a repeating signal or is this active? This is an active connection. Okay. We, we are able to hear you. However, our communications array has suffered significant damage. We are... We are... While you may be able to see us, we are unable to identify you. Please state your... Please state who, your name, your species, and who you represent. Before I do so, uh, I'm actually going to ask for their uh, Federation clearance codes for the for the sector that they were supposed to be operating in. How's verification? An, un, an unusual, if somewhat optimistic, request. And he rattles off a series of numbers that you check with your red book, and they are indeed accurate. Very well, then. Uh, I am Captain Sengrel of the Federation Starship Nighthawk. We were also sent here through the anomaly, which we assume you have been as well. And we came to find exactly ex what the truth is about all this, and we came to investigate. Uh, stay where you are. I'm not like you exactly you can move. We'll attempt to come to you as soon as we can and try to f help facilitate repairs. Understood. It is, a, it is a pleasure to hear a friendly voice. We have been uh, we have been in hiding for the past week while we uh, attempt to ascertain the situation. Our ships are heavily damaged from our trip through the anomaly. Be aware, Captain, there are Tholians on operation on the planet Kate. We have evidence of their presence, although we are unable to ascertain their level of technology. Understood. We'll be advised and be cautious. So, what's uh, what's our helm situation looking like, Mr. Jefferson? Thankfully, sir, the uh, thankfully, sir, the engines were not damaged. That's all. Uh, the structure is doing a better um, impersonation of Swiss cheese at the moment, but damage control teams are are on them. Can we get a black alert? Not until the breach is repaired, sir. <clears throat> and to repair a breach is a control plus engineering task. Uh, this will be a difficulty of two uh, for the Shran. Yep. And because the ship is out, um, you either or one of your engineering cohorts can assist if they like. Okay. So I was trying to see if anything I have anything that applies. Uh, no. So what did you say difficulty was? Uh, difficulty two. Two. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and spend a momentum. Sure. You said control plus engineering, right? Control engineering. Unless you want to use your jury rig talent, because that would be hilarious. Uh, yeah, that's probably not a good idea in this situation. Fair enough. Oof. That's one success from you. Uh, who's helping you out? Uh, let's see. Cassatt probably makes the most sense. So. All right. Uh, who's got Cassatt? I got him up. Okay. Uh, feel free to activate him and make a roll as necessary. Control engineering. Um, how about? Emergency repairs as a focus. That would work well, yes. And what was it? Control engineering. Yes, indeed. And 
and there's the one from Cassatt. So it's a bit of a shame, uh, Thashran, that you've had to apply this amount of duct tape over work that was just so recently done, but the ship systems are once again functional. Well, I mean, we do have uh, approximately 700 years to fix up again, so... Cassatt raises an eyebrow. I'm not entirely certain that's how temporal phenomenon work, Cap. Commander. Oh, uh, don't worry about it. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll have plenty of time to figure it out. As you say, sir. <laughs> you approach the ex the extreme range of the solar system of Kate. Uh, there is several uh, small class D uh, planets that have been caught in its peripheral. Uh, it is a yellow. It is a, a yellow ah yellow sun similar to that of Earth. I'm hearing myself through someone's speakers. Anyways, uh, the Federation starships have taken, uh, have pulled in close to one of them, just to avoid the, or avoid any particularly suspicious prying eyes. And you do see them. They are all, you, they all show signs of damage. Uh, the USS Greenwich, the smallest one does appear to be particularly beaten up, whereas the USS Sarek appears to be the most intact. Uh, work bees and, uh, and and crews in EVA suits d uh, dot or light up the night sky with uh, the dots of uh, plasma torches. As you approach, the USS Sarek uh, moves out and intercepts. Captain. As Captain Centaur once or hails the ship, and finally a proper video communication can be established. Captain, welcome to Kate. Well, thank you. To be completely clear, you do realize exactly when we are, correct? Yes, we have a rough idea. We are in the approximately the 1600s of Earth time. That is why we have uh, kept to the extremities of the solar system in an attempt to make repairs before we brave the uh, anomaly again. So... Can you describe to me in detail exactly what maneuvers the Seventh Fleet was up to when the Zinkethi, I'm sorry, when the Tholians initiated, and exactly up until the point where you entered the anomaly? Yes, Captain. We were we were running our fleet maneuvers, uh, Formation Delta Four, I believe. Takeshi likes that one, as it projects most of our forward elements. To the enemy at any one time. It was the USS Greenwich that discovered it first, uh, past an ano a minor chronotome anomaly. Uh, we didn't see it until we were right on top of it. The USS Archangel attempted to scan it with its advanced sensor arrays and ended up unzipping it as our more colorful engineers have put it once by the time the, we didn't realize how big the rift would get and we did not have time to prepare ourselves the, what you these ships fell into the hole So, agents, anything that's coming up so far seem familiar to you? Well, Mulder taps away at his pad, slightly disinterestedly. Well, Captain, you are captains. Uh, thankfully, there is no recollection in Cation history regarding several ships of unknown origin, at least not at this point in time. Hm. Now I'm doing it. There is 
a night of stars that is referenced to happen in one day's time, possibly in relation to this. We are not entirely certain yet. Mr. Thishan, are the industrial replicators, uh, do they, do they have enough capacity to help assist repairing the rest of these starships? Uh, what do I find out? What uh, kind of test are you make? Easy enough. You're, you would know that off the top of your head. Okay. So you're, because you're so fresh from dry dock, aside from the fact that you've had to put a little bit into your own work, you... You can certainly provide uh, engineers and assistance. Not a problem, Captain. That's uh, something me and my team can can help out with. Sir, do you think they need any medical assistance? Well, I mean, what? they probably do. Do you, Captain? Do you? We have suffered s some casualties. Thankfully, most of our crewmen are... Most most of the crew members survived. Additional med additional medical teams would be assist would be a would be greatly appreciated. To be quite honest, I'm more concerned about the Thalians upon the surface. As am I, Captain. So, do you know the ex the uh, average count of how many there may there may be? We have only seen one ship. A small shuttlecraft size vessel and we and a covert probe detected only three life signs and we have their technology uh, the Cation technology at this time is too primitive for us to eavesdrop on their current situations so we are unable to prov provide any cultural details we have not risked a visual look on the planet's surface Commander Bashir, if it's not necessary, I honestly don't necessarily. I don't feel like we should keep the night hack here with the rest of these people. The, our, honestly, our priority right now is to at least recover the Tholians and try to at least lessen the amount of possible temporal interference that may be created. Regardless of whether or not it seems like we're going to be here for a while, I would like some shuttle props, some shuttle props prepped to go to the planet. Yes, Captain. I'll get ready right away. Alright, so big question time. If the Nighthawk doesn't necessarily have to be here physically to assist in repairs, mm -hmm. I want to take us to the planet. Sure. So, alright, so in case, uh, unless we just, if they need industrial replicators, if there's any way that we could just give them one, or pull out ours, that's completely fine with me. But right now, I kind of just want to skedaddle to uh, the, the planet of Kate. Okay. And if they do need us, then I just want to, like I said, I'd like to price my shuttles regardless. And then run it too far. We'll... Basically load up with uh, medical personnel and equipment mm -hmm. and take people from um, the Shran's uh, engineering team and send them to the ships that need it the most. Yeah, exactly. And while we drop off the shuttles, we take the Nighthawk to the planet and find out what's going on. That's the plan. All right. So um, just go ahead. While they were doing all that, I was sending a message to the um, chief engineer on the U.S. Um, well, to the engineering group to my sister on the Orion mm -hmm. just seeing if she's okay there's uh, you receive a text message back saying hey bro nice or hey bro nice to see you uh, can't talk now attempting to restabilize the antimatter matrix but it's, it's nice that it uh, quick text saying it's nice that it took a distortion of space time for us to finally be together at least in the same quadrant. All right, we gotta go fix something. While you fix that, we'll catch catch up when we get out of here. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, just for funsies, um, the USS Nighthawk's uh, shuttle capacity is going to drop by three for those that remain behind. And the USS Nighthawk is going to head to Kate. The planet of Kate is a Class M environment with a significantly higher land mass to ocean ratio than that of, say, planet Earth or many other Class M planets. Mo uh, at this time, most of it is grasslands uh, with fairly um, with fairly low uh, polar ice cap density. Uh, there is a lovely series of rings around it that persist to this day. Uh, there are no moons, I should say. Can we get a specific sand on where the Tholians have gone? That or is going they're... to be an in. That's going to be a sensors check, uh, Vaid. Yep. Uh, insight science, and the ship can assist with sensors plus science. Oh, my lovely science is back. Awesome. Okay, that is four successes in total, so that is two momentum. The Tholians stick out like a sore thumb as one would expect a non-humanoid uh, species that requires extremely hot temperatures to survive living amongst a class M planet. <clears throat> the Tholians are residing in uh, there are a grand total of five of them um, and they are located in, on a mountain top in the northern hemisphere. Uh, you do not see evidence of a shuttle um, but you are picking up a structure uh, deep within the mountain that the Tholians are res are residing around. Does this mountaintop have a name by chance? Um, yeah, collating it with, uh, ah, correlating it with the data from Starfleet Intelligence and your or the Department of Temporal Investigations and your own and the ship's database of Cation history. Yes, it is the mountain of Wasar Top. Makes sense. Oh, here's the, uh, here's a quick question. Mm -hmm. How about our new, uh, upgrades to our, uh, transporters? Can we get a lock on them and get them out of there? You are certainly, uh, you can certainly try. Mm -hmm. Um, the heat of the volcano would, or everything around the volcano is, you know, cause could cause some problems, but you're welcome to try. Let's see if we're at long range, we're going through shields with additional difficulty. And if we're at normal range, it doesn't give us any added benefit. Correct. Well, we're not going through shields, but you did say that they're within an underground structure, right? That is right, yes. Yeah. And in the painting, at least, I myself clearly don't have any cosmetic alterations to myself. I, I have my spots. You have your spots, yes. Uh, it's, it's very difficult for humanoid species to disguise themselves as Cations, because Cations have kept their uh, digit, digit-grade legs, the legs that bend backwards, as during their evolutionary cycles. And remember, you can spend momentum to ask further questions. Off the sensor scan, doesn't... Don't we get a free question? I suppose you do. You did ask me one, though, so I don't know if I should count uh -huh. that or not. Oh, well. Does Vade get a free question? I'll let Vade have a free question. Is there anything that <laughs> you all are really wanting to ask? I want to ask. Well, I want to know exactly. Besides the Tholians, are they cl are they close to any other Cations? Even if they're within the mountain, are there any settlements or particulars 
are they are these life signs intermixing with any native Cajuns? We'll go with that. Okay. Uh, there are two settlements on the mountain. Uh, one is right at the mountain peak, and one is approximately halfway down the mountain. The um, there's about 200 life signs at the peak of the mountain, and approximately a thousand in the halfway down village. Okay, so there's 500 at the peak and 1,000 at the base of the village. 200. Oh, 200 at the yep. peak. Correct. Okay. If I have any knowledge of the Tholian, I would assume they're probably going to do something with the volcano and make it erupt. Because they, this environment wouldn't be able to sustain them for long. I mean, that's... A one could do a knowledge, uh, some sort of history check, or check of the databases, because you know how history is supposed to work out. Oh, that's true. That's a very good point. So, insight, science. Yeah. Insight, science. Um, ship could assist with computers plus science. And if you have anything along the lines of history or cultural studies, that would work. And this will be a difficulty of one. Hey, sorry about that, folks. My, com With all the talk of technical glitches, my computer decided to join the Nighthawk and turn itself off and back on again. But we are we back. Use the it, it needs a disco ball. It needs a disco yeah. ball. Okay, so I believe that the Shra or Bashir was about to do history stuff. Um, I did, actually. That was our last... Uh... Last Check thing? Nighthawk. Nighthawk got one, and one. Bashir got, I got a crit. Two. Yep. So yep. that is one momentum for you guys. Okay, so um, in the um, in Cation year uh, 912, uh, according to the Cation calendar, um, the mountain top or the mountain of Wasar Top exploded with the force of Krakatoa, if not much higher than that. The uh, what this did is it sent a delicate ecosystem and the several um, warring tribes of Cations uh, into a downward spiral that would last uh, several generations. However, the Cations that survive um, realized it was far more it was far more beneficial to work as a single unified society instead of one that was always scrabbling at each other for resources or political benefit. So the eruption, while a disaster at the time, eventually led to the Cation Society that eventually would join the Federation. Well, cool. so we have to kill hundreds of thousands of people to make history perform itself. Well, no, we I was going to ask what it is did they specifically know any casualties? I mean, yeah, sure, the, the mountain exploded, but oh, did people actually did, did people actually perish? Um, over the course of the uh, over the course of the several years that the volcanic ash stayed in the atmosphere, the li the lingering effects definitely caused several thousand, if not tens of thousands, if not more than that, to perish. The numbers are not um, not well recorded, as are several things during this particular time of upheaval. Uh, there's no mention specifically of anyone in the village surviving. Um, however, it does. There is a curious footnote that this chap known as Seraph was a was dwelling in the village and should have died, but didn't. Because I'm just curious to see if there's any sort of hidden evacuation things that happened that either weren't recorded or might have been looked up. I'm sure we probably, whatever's going to take place in a lot of environmental damage, and obviously that probably did lead to the loss of life, but I'm just wondering if the immediate people knew if exactly. If we can evacuate the villages. Exactly. Um, Agent Mulder just looks up you're not actually thinking of 
attempting to tamper with temporal by saving people. Are you, Captain? No, I'm not, but I am mulling over our options, or the options that I may or may not have done already. I'm not sure. You guys are the temporal mechanics experts. But I understand that this is supposed to take place, and I'll see to it to the best of our ability that it does. But I just want to explore the possible options that we may or may not have taken already. And I stand up, and I want to turn around right to them, and I was like, if you know something you're not telling us of what we should do, tell us so we can do this right. If not, yeah, I think we should save these people. We are in uncharted territory here, Commander Bashir. Yes, what all we have to go on is several reports of the lingering catastrophic damage left by the eruption of this volcano. The sociological reports of philos of historians, uh, philosophical treaties by outsiders, and census data that isn't that doesn't come close to becoming accurate for roughly another 50 years after the eruption. So, I understand that it is a cold feeling to witness individuals die, but from your point, from our point of view, they passed several generations ago. In any case, no one's necessarily talking about making sure history doesn't flow the way that we know it is. That is our mandate, and we are going to protect it. In any case, in terms of explorations of what may or may not, or what will or will not happen, let's get some tactical data. Well, t some tactile data now. If this volcano does happen to, and this mountainside does explode, we're here right now. Can we get a more accurate geological representation and give us a simulation of what the model may be? I mean, if we're going to let these people die, I want to know exactly what's going to happen to them so at least we can avoid it. Okay. That is going to be another um, planetary sciences check. So another insight science, ship will assist with sensor science. Vaid, you should know these roles by heart by now. Do you want the ship to assist or would you rather have me assist? Uh, whichever one would, whichever one you'd like. Ship is a 12 with a 3. Right. I should say wow. this was a difficulty 3, so yep, Vade, you got that. Okay, well, you know what, I'm going to go... Because I'm 12-5. Nice. Knock it out, man. Not to mention I get that whole... Uh... Focus, bonus. Yay, yeah, focus. That is five degrees of success, so two more momentum. Cool. So what is interesting um, is the geological data of the volcano itself. What is interesting is that the lava is the lava level is decreasing, and the magma pressure is lessening. Um, something. Uh, you know, the signs of a volcano eruption are pretty clear, especially one of the, uh, assuming it is as of a magnitude of the, of what is described in Cajun history. Uh, this volcano appears to be going, it might have been active at one point, but now it's falling back. And um, I suppose that the only most likely cause of that is the, uh, is this all ends? That would be my guess. Well, Vade gets a free question, yes. Yes, she does. Yes. Uh, that wasn't a question. <laughs> Maybe she could ask if the Thulians are responsible no, for statement. going down. That was a statement. That wasn't a question. Yeah, I was going to say. No, no. We're pretty sure. A potential that. question could be. <laughs> nudge, nudge. Wink, wink. <laughs> what did you say now? <laughs> Put Dipper down on the floor. No, 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 I know. It's just that everything was going on at that time while you were talking. <laughs> Do the Thol are the Tholians one responsible for the volcanic activity decreasing? Stopping. Uh, uh, or is there it... something else going on on the planet? But. 
I'll go with a Tholian, but like, okay. are they the ones responsible? Um, difficult to say without getting, um, you know, better eyes on the ground. But considering that there is a Tholian structure uh, that residing within the mountain of Wasar Top, chances are they are a contrib a heavily contributory factor. All right. Well. I have a well. half of the Federation fleet on the outskirts of the system, and I have a bunch of Tholians messing with the volcano, and, and I'm back in time. And not to mention, we know you're supposed to be on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> as much as I don't want to go on this away mission. <laughs> I could just leave the away mission and the painting can turn into, like, blue antenna will, like, grow up. On <laughs> we it. could. And it just could. change. <laughs> We can disguise you as a trill. Oh. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Everybody going on the away mission has to be disguised as a trill. spots. <laughs> just so we make sure we do it correctly. <laughs> Can't I just say I'm some albino occasion or something? With some weird legs and still put me through cosmetic <laughs> surgery? You're a, you're a hairless occasion. I'm a hairless occasion. <laughs> Oh All right. God. Well, I've, got, I've gotten I've gotten my jokes out of the way. I haven't. Here. Oh, I was gonna say no. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not over. Let's uh, let's put an away team. I want an away team specifically to monitor the volcano and the the Tholian presence within it. So get some science members and probably a few security officers. They Why don't, don't we do be... two two away teams, one to the volcano proper village? That's the plan. Okay. So let me figure out. So let's go to the... Okay, so the team on the mountain. Who is going to be on the mountain? Or the top of the mountain, I should say. Um, Helsing and... Uh... Singrel. Master Chief. Uh, no, no. We'll go on the mountain, okay. and Hanara and Loxley will go down below. So that is with Yaz taking the bridge. Okay, so sorry, that was uh, Helsing and Noel on top. Helsing and Noel on top. This is sounding so bad. Helsing and Noel on top, and um, Loxley and Hanara in the village below. Okay. Go here for put Loxley and Hanara. Okay, and who else is going where? Um, I mean, we do. Oh, well, I'm saying we do have another case on the ship. Even if they're on, you know, they're in the science department, they should they should go on this mission as well. That's true. We can put them on the um, one going into the uh, Tholian lair. Okay. So actually, I rather them go to the village. Roger that. Two cations down below. Two cations to the village. Okay. Um, let's see, Captain Singral. I'm gonna I'm gonna go knock on the Tholian's door. Yeah, okay. I'll lead the uh, one on the village. Okay, so Bashir to the village, and the captain to the mountain. No, and we had all five life signs in the structure. All mm -hmm. yeah, all five life signs either in the on the structure or just on the surface, right above it. Uh, Recommend we go heavy. I don't want to go heavy and risk actually. Oh, I don't want just, to... just for the structure where the Tholians are. I don't want to accidentally set anything off, but it's probably for the best. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so you're taking, you're giving me threat to bring heavier weapons. Yep. Armor. Awesome. Taser threes and sonic grenades. Excellent. Works for me. I get to, I get more threat. Wahaha. Um. We do give it to you. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And I, I appreciate every piece you give me. Uh, Thashran, um, what what are you doing? Uh, I was trying to think which team was more likely to need engineering assistance. I think you should go with the captain's team on the volcano. Okay. Because what, you'd be more logical. I'm going on a more diplomatic mission. I think with yours is going to be more whatever finding out what the structure is and what they're doing because of the aspect of 
you might have to set off the volcano. <laughs> oh, that always sounds like fun, setting off volcanoes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, I guess volcano it is. Okay, and, and I miss Vaid. I will take Vaid. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. You're a good choice. Actually, I mean, yeah. I was going to... Well, I know we're still figuring out the away team. I was going to suggest that Vaid remain in command of the Nighthawk. Not to deprive okay. you of your fun. But I mean, oh, got nobody, I mean, got no senior I staff have, up here. That's a good idea. I'm, I do have an archaeologist in the science department in case you want to take them. Cool. I mean, that sounds nice. Yep. Which one's the archaeologist? Maybe. Uh, Zobet. Ah. Zobet, I don't think we've actually used him all that much. Considering he doesn't have a proper token, I'm going to say we haven't really used him at all. Cool. Okay. So we have Mr. Zobet, an archaeologist. And he'll go up the mountain? Yes, that would probably be the better one. Okay, so we are going to deal with the captain's um, mountaintop excursion second. But for the moment, we are going to the village of Asserlop. <clears throat> Halfway down the mountain, uh, the the it's a very humid environment. Um, jungle extends up the mountaintop um, in one of the very few uh, rainforesty portions of the planet of Kate. Uh, the village of Asterlop is built quite seamlessly into it, um, trying to maintain a good balance between civilization and nature. As such, there's not much in the way of bulldozed areas. More like... Uh, Structures are built just simply where trees are not. Um, you are able to beam into the dense forest without no, without triggering any sort of alarms or anyone noticing you, which is a good first start. Um, it is, especially since looking at the tokens, it's a uh, stick out like sore thumbs. <laughs> uh, you know, two of you, anyways. The, there is ample wildlife around, and there's a sign of uh, simple, simple agriculture. Um, I wouldn't really call it um, fields of food, but you can certainly tell where they've cultivated fr fruit trees or small pens of edible prey. Um, I should also mention that this is a scene change, so you lose one of those momentums. So, how do you wish to proceed about this? Uh, well, um, just kind of going into town proper. Um, is there any sort? I mean, are just like meaning like stuff like that that we can tell? I mean, it's definitely not industrialized or it's like. Um. I, you cut out just for the crucial part of the question. What are you, what are you looking for? Uh, uh, I, I basically I was looking for like, is there a town center? Ah. Or yes, there is a town center. I should ask because this is incredibly important. Um, how are you disguising your blueness or her or Brel's lack of facial fur? <laughs> cloaks <laughs> totally cloaks i got nothing because doing the whole cosmetic thing ain't gonna cut it so <laughs> all right uh what about the uh cations? what are you guys wearing probably the same thing with hoods down <laughs> okay. generic cloaks of yeah basically rustic looking classic like so we can try to blend in as much as possible. Okay. I'll have mine way up, and you know, Loxley will have hers way up, and the other two can always be <clears throat> out. Right, okay. <laughs> uh, so, because I find this amusing, and because you've given me so much nice threat, uh, there is one complication: is that due okay. to the humidity um, and the heat in this general area, um, many of the locals do are not wearing a heck of a lot. Um, <laughs> just 
because they are a warm-blooded fur species anyways, they don't need the extra protection against the elements. It's fairly, okay. it's fairly quick for a core and Hanara to change and become, you know, respectable, as respectable mm-hmm. as a cat girl can be in a PG-13 show. Um, <laughs> but for you two, well, hmm. right. Anyways, yeah. uh, the overall architecture is as vertical as possible. There are, there is, I wouldn't call it a single city center. But a quick scan of the tricorder indicates uh, gatherings in three separate places. Uh, one would appear to be a market-type district. <clears throat> uh, there is a um, center that appears to be for worship, or maybe governments, or maybe both. And a third just appears to be a large social gathering. And that's all you can get from scanning from, you know, where you are. Okay. All right. Well, like I said, I think we're going to head into the center of the village and see if we can figure out where this guy's at. Okay. I'm just going to roll some d20 here. Pay no attention. Wow. Okay. So, um, despite being blue and pink, uh, you somehow managed to move through the city without attract, or not the city, the town without attracting too much in the way of attention. For me, that's very unusual. <laughs> uh, because, so the Cation, the Cation fur patterns here are more, um, they are similar to that of a panther or maybe that of a leopard. So either dark black or uh, brownish with uh, black spots. So Hanara passes fairly easily. Uh, Ensign Akor, you are stopped on more than one occasion uh, to ask about your heritage. Uh, Who's playing Akor? Yeah, who wants to play Akor? I I guess I will. (laughs) Okay. Oh, man. Albino. Just use the usual excuse. I'm from Northern Province. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from I'm, yeah, I'm from the Northern Province. It's like I'm my friend. I need to blend in. The the curi- that seems to satiate the curiosity. Oh, except one who is wearing um. That's weird. Uh, who is their clothes are more ceremonial in nature. You can see. Uh, decorated patterns of a shiny of a uh, woven shiny thread uh, through his um, through his robe or maybe a cloak maybe a cape cape sounds good let's go with cape ah have you have you come have you come so far as to worship our deities yes ah splendid Please do come. Uh, ah. Well, I'm, he's speaking to a core. I'm. Assu- they're not. I'm not even going to think because thankfully. I, I'm gonna let. Yeah, I'm gonna let her do some talking. Yeah. I'll stand behind, but I'll still like. Yes, yes, we are. I, <laughs> the way that I'm imagining it is that a core and Hanara are out there, and they just mm-hmm. look into an alleyway for affirmation before they respond. <laughs> <laughs> I got gloves on and a cl- like a cloak on with like so open I can <laughs> open calmly. Oh, I just no, I like screw that. I like this. Just the old uh huh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, remember how quiet you were. You're not quiet anymore. Let me tone your volume back down a bit. Oh. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I'm standing up like in my apartment, just like well, okay. All right, let's let's do this. For your birthday, I'm sending you a headset. Anyways, um, okay. So, uh, wait, I actually have a character for this. Um, where are my vacation tokens? They are here. Uh, his name is Neglish. Neglish. Um, as you turn around or as he turns around and gestures you to follow him, uh, his cape 
is finally or finally catches your eyes, and it is uh, a pattern, and and woven into the woven into it is that of a spider. Uh, he brings you through the uh, initial city streets as you guys make your way through. I wouldn't call it crowded per se, but it's definitely. Well, it's not unpopulated. The most interesting form of transportation, the most interesting form of transit, uh, happens if you look up, and you see several zip lines going bet from levels to level. Um, the Cations appear to lock their claws over top of a zip line and then ride it down to the if they're heading to, to a lower level. And Naglish does this at least once and indicates you to follow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Remember how I mentioned I had gloves? <laughs> um, as he gets to the bottom, he shouts up, "Do you, are you unpracticed with this form of transportation up in your province?" Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> she's like she. <laughs> a a core looks back, tries it, tries to like slyly glance back at the others before she. Anara says, "Those those who are with us are physically disabled, but hold an important part in the tribes." And English <laughs> nods and <laughs> understands that it's. And then gestures to a nearby staircase. It's very difficult, of course, for them to slide up a zip line, so even the patients have to walk up. But yes. We, we've we only heard stories of the new gods. Is the pattern on your, on your cape representative of them? Yes. Uh, the great Karavix came to us several, several years back and spoke of tales of a great disaster looming and how he was and how he and his and how he and his cadre could prevent such catastrophe all he required was some assistance from us and a few some resources which we gladly gave we would not it is <laughs> he chuckles to himself we certainly don't wish to die and then he began his great project up up there, and he points to the top of the mountain, which is currently uh, enscrolled with dark gray clouds. And you can see, you know, a kilometer or two up, the terrain change or the environment changing from a lush green area to more of a barren, windswept uh, land. And at this, speaking of barren and windswept, let's cut to the captain and his folks. It is harder to find a secluded beaming point for the uh, mountaintop that you find yourselves on, but thankfully, um, Commander Z or uh, Ensign Zed manages to pull it off. You find yourself at the base of a fairly long path leading to a temple-like structure. There is a blue light that pierces the temple structure and beams up into space. Uh, on the other end of this path, just behind you, is a series of tents, or tent city, I should say, where several Cations are um, perf are living in a life of, I wouldn't quite call it squalor, mere, uh, bare necessities would be the better term for it. Spade is going to calm the captain. Captain, are you there? I'm receiving you, Vade. Go ahead. <laughs> if you find anything for Admiral Bear, make sure you try to pick it up. <laughs> I'll be sure to keep that in mind. 
Now, there's just so much out here that I'm sure I'll be able to take something without uh, history getting mad at me. I mean, after all, I mean, they did paint me in my image, so, I mean, I pretty much own this mountain, right? One would think, maybe a fancy rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Did I hear he Bayet just... asking for an engagement ring? Calix Zeal takes note. <laughs> uh, this, well, is, this is a now a running joke and I love it okay I'll keep this calm line open as long as possible and uh, uh, Sam roll out so can we do uh, with this massive beam of light can we determine exactly um, is it natural or is there an energy source actually being protruded from this thing that would be Let's get some tricorder stands on yep yeah, that would be uh Probably an, it would either be science or engineering. So insight science or insight engineering. And one person can assist the other with either. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two. Mr. Thishran. Sorry, what was the rule again? Uh, insight engineering. Okay. If you have anything along the lines of particle physics or alien technology, now would be a good time for it. No, not quite. All right. Uh, I'll go ahead and spend momentum for this. Sure. That would be three successes. Um, so that would be one momentum back. Yep. Uh, the particle appears to be the tail end of the chroniton particle's tether that you were investigating on the other side of time and space. Uh, it appears to be flowing away from the planet. Um, so all particles are move. All the particles are moving from here back up into space and going wherever the heck particles go. Uh, the structure itself is made of uh, primitive stone and barely refined me uh, minerals but does show signs that it was erected fairly recently. Uh, there is a minimal amount of advanced uh, metals that are deeper within the structure. It appears to be leading down into the caldera. This, uh, hmm. I guess, do I know enough about... Um, well, it's difficult if I know about, about Kate history and culture know if they if this actually would be reasonable for them to have made in this time period uh if you have cultural studies or something along that line that would be a difficulty of two uh we'll do reason plus science okay i do have cultural studies actually oh perfect then that is the two successes you need uh, Cations were not ones to build large uh, structures at at really any point in their uh, cultural history. Uh, many of their tribes were uh, nomadic or set up very loose definitions of home, at least before the volcano erupt. At least before the volcano of Wasartop went boom. Uh, so giant temples like this are more of an oddity than a commonality okay so interesting so not something they would normally build and but it was still built fairly recently why don't we see if we could get closer and actually attempt to quantum date the structure in and of itself um question mm -hmm. um so you mentioned the part the, this particle fountain um is this a visible phenomena? How is it, can, is this like a visible phenomena that's actually protruding from the planet? Like, was is, was the Nighthawk actually able to like if they just wanted to zoom in, could they see this, or do the particles dissipate like in atmosphere? The and light, it's, um, it's invisible the, there. the atmosphere dissipates the particles fairly quickly, or at least the visual spectrum is yeah. dissipated okay. as it breaches the temple surface. So, all right. Well, 
like to um, see if we can get whatever the uh, chronoton signature is of this fountain. And I want to make sure we can monitor it for any changes and also feed that information back to the Nighthawk so they can monitor it as well. All right. From where the anomaly, from where we were pulled in from the anomaly. Okay. That sounds like fun. Uh, this is going to be another one of those in uh, insight sciences or insight engineering. And this is going to be a difficulty of two. And I think you should be down to three momentum if I've been keeping track right. Because I think you pulled one there for the SRAM, but didn't remove it from the pool. Well, I pulled... No, I didn't pull one, but I, I went back for getting oh. my success. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. GM yeah. bad at math. Okay, cool. Never yeah. mind. Uh, so, sorry, so you're saying Insight Engineering again for this one? Uh, yes, Insight Engineering or Insight Science. And one person can assist if they wish. I'll go ahead and assist this out at... Sure. And us momentum for this as, as well. Okay. We got a bunch. There's your three successes. And what does Zobet do? Ah. That's yes. four successes. So two momentum back. Huzzah! All right, back to full. Uh, so the quantum dating on the materials of the temple indicate that uh, the temple is at least in line with the tr current timeline the advanced technology inside is another matter. What you're able to see from a distance indicates that it should be more in line with the chronot with the Nighthawks timeline. Not or time period. Mm -hmm. I sure hope this is one of those situations where it turns out we're the ones who brought this in the first place and then we brought it here for us to find. Mm -hmm. This makes my head hurt. <laughs> I mean, that is a possibility, but we still don't know exactly who built this. It still could be the Tholans. Oh. I mean, we don't... It's unlikely, because you said it was recent, but, I mean, at least in turn, we can't discount anything at this point. Uh, Commander Helsing, uh, you and Noel uh, spot movement at the gate, at the portal, or the threshold of the temple, as two individuals who are very clearly Tholians in their environmental suits emerge and a loud bell r rings uh, r ah, a loud bell rings and its reverberations carry down the mountainside to the village below or the tent city below where all the Cations emerge some of whom are very rub their eyes wearily as if they were roused from sleep on their as you watch um, roughly 50 of them from the village gather up pick up some heavy tools and begin heading towards the mountain uh, roughly 30 of them uh, emerge from the temple and begin to stagger down the mountain path, obviously exhausted. Shift change, Captain. Well, there's no easy way that we can blend ourselves in with the coming and calling us of the crowd, so we should probably wait until whenever the shift change is done and see if we can go into the temple ourselves. Now that people are coming and going, can we get any clearer scans of the internals of this thing? Of the temple itself. The temple itself. Ah, yeah. I want to see if we can transport in. Uh, you, your scans have not indicated any sort of shields. Um, the rocks are fairly dense, and there is a the top of the temp the top of the temple is choked off, but you do see that there is a large cavern uh, yawning beneath your feet. Um, there is a structure down there that is obviously of obviously the Tholian thing that you have mm -hmm. on the lookout for uh, it would be tricky but uh, with all the um, uh, with all the chronoton energy and the uh, s sweltering heat just generated by the volcano it's going to be tricky I different plan than <laughs> Commander Helsing, Commander Thishan 
is it possible to like make sure we can modify our phaser rifles or our tricarters and just see if we could paint these tholians for transport to make sure the nighthawk has a better has a better lock i want to take them into custody as long as they're out here and then we could go question them theoretically i guess we possible to yeah. the commander yes uh early I can lasers were used for yeah early lasers were used for spotting way back in the 20th century I can try to try whip something up and try to uh, modify what we have and see if we can get that done. All right, make make sure you can make the modifications. Same rule to Nighthawk, or same rule to Transporter Room 3. Kazel, we're going to be giving you a target to, to, to I-4. When we uh, tell you to hit Energize, you make sure you get the Stolians as best as possible. Transport us to these coordinates, and I want to make sure to transport us, not inside the temple, but that little awning that's like away from them, that little clearing. I just want to go question them there. Uh, so, Jim, what's the role I need to make to to modify um, to get that done? Uh, this is going to be a um, this is going to either be a control engineering or control security test. Um, this is going to destroy one of your phasers, so it'll make it useless for actual combat. Or I should Zobit, say, would give up your. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two. Yeah. Okay. Zobit will give up their phaser three and just rely back on their phaser two. Okay. Okay. And also momentum. Boost the roll. Sorry, Zobit. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, Sashran, you believe that you... after doing some tinkering and whatnot, uh, you accidentally cause the phaser rifle to emit a whine that both Liam Helsing and Lee Sonor know instinctively is going to be a problem within approximately three seconds. I throw it as far as, far as I can. Go right. forth the rifle out. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see what happens next. Oh, this is how we blow up the volcano. <laughs> <clears throat> Just a couple years too early. <laughs> That's the, that, that would be actually amazing just for the aspect of... So, like, whoops. <laughs> yeah, one bad roll just is, destroys the whole planet. That's, <laughs> that's our time. That's our time travel adventure. And all yeah. of a sudden, all Cations are no longer part of your crew and no one seems to remember them. Anyways, uh -oh. the... Aww. No, we're, we're not at that point yet. You can still recover, but you cannot recover that phaser rifle because it explodes um, sl just off the mountain path. Thankfully, Thashran, you were smart enough not to throw it towards any groups of uh, life or civilizations. You throw it off down the mountain, there is a booming explosion and which causes a small rock slide. <laughs> Both, uh, I turn and say... Carry on. Oh, sorry. I was to say, uh, I turn and say, "Whoops!" Uh, looks like the temporal travel uh, messed up my calc calculations a little bit. You know how it is. The two Tholian troopers begin uh, moving towards the sound of the explosion. Uh, they're not showing much politeness in their movements, as they are, as the Cations are the ones who seem to be moving aside for them to let them pass. Um, any, those of you who, are the Cations. So Zobet are and the, the Shran would notice this. Uh, they they nod their heads and sort of touch their heart as a sign of reverence as the Tholians pass. So the Tholians are coming past while the shift change is going out. Correct. Yes. We can take them. Well, if all the Cations are passed, then I will definitely like to engage them. Okay. Um, they... Um, sadly, they rolled well enough that they do... They know that the explosion was not natural. And definitely not a technology native to this timeline. So they're not... So they you don't catch them unawares, but you still do get the surprise initiative. Or you get... 
first round of combat, which means good guys go first. See, my, my master plan all worked out. <laughs> so who wants to do? Who wants to shoot something in the face or an approximate face? Oh, Helsing will by all means. All right. Do we have to... What range are we at? Um, that depends. Do you want to wait until they're within optimal firing distance, or do you want to shoot the second that you think you get a shot? Um, wait till we see them get as close as they can, Okay. and then pop them. Okay. That way we'll be able to get a charge. Okay, yep. So you get your first action, which is um, the minor and the stand. Standard action. Roger, so I'll do it. It'll be um, a charge. I'll be using area. Okay. And control. And I will take one of the um, momentum dice. All right. Well, that's... Um... That was a difficulty two, so you get two momentum right back. It's a money maker. It is indeed. Uh, so roll me some challenge dice, please. Um, however many that is for you. I think that's nine. It'll be nine. Okay. This will be fun. Well. And I'll fit a momentum to reroll zeros. I was thinking you were going to do that, because that's a lot of zeros. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so eight total damage. With four effects. Yeah, four effects. And what do effects do for area? So... I don't think it does anything with area. Where is it? Uh, let's see, area. It attacks. There it is. Yeah. So for each effect rolled, you target one additional creature within range. So obviously you will be able to affect both th uh, Tholians. <clears throat> you are able to deal them. Okay. So, yeah, you breach their suits. Uh, both of them emit a large screeching sound, similar to that of nails on a chalkboard, or to those who are slightly newer than chalkboard technology, that of a dial-up modem or fax machine, as they both screech in pain and st stagger back. Uh, however, their suits are tough stuff. So they are not down, and it now turns to one of them. <clears throat> one of them, uh, realizing where the shoot, where the shot comes from, uh, makes uh, in absolute silence beyond the initial scream, is going to try shooting back with a pistol in his in its hand. Is control security, and be. Yeah, I'll save that for now. But it goes it goes wide over it goes wide over your head, impacting on the rocks behind you, Helsing. Who wants to go next? I'll go ahead and take a shot. Go ahead, Captain. With Noel, right? Oh uh no. <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and pull out my head. You you haven't qualified lately, sir. I have not, but I mean hey man. When you get a painting that's from seven hundred years in the past, then you can make the decisions. Now Noel's a trill too, so it could be a fur. Well, that's up to the DTI guys to determine. I'll spend a momentum for one extra die. All right. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, that's, yep, two more momentum for you. Did you do area or do a charge? Oh, we're going to do a charge here. Okay. Sorry. I forgot to mention. Okay, a charge for what effect? You can do like area piercing. Yeah. Let's go with piercing. Oh, okay, cool. Their suits are made of sturdy stuff. Let's get through it. Okay, I'm just going to mark them as that's red and that is blue. Okay, uh, so roll me, I think that would be eight challenge dice for you. <clears throat> and that is eight with a piercing of three. Cool. So that will eat through. Uh, which one are you targeting, blue or red? Blue. Okay. That is enough. Um, the shot pierces a where the suit breached. You are able to hit it again with precision. That would make Liam Helsing raise an eyebrow. And this one um, collapses under its own weight. And do we do quick action? Sure. Do quick action. I'll use that for me to let Noel go. Okay. Well, I'm afraid Noel is... Uh, well, that was a science roll there. Um, Phew, thank God. Actually, if you wouldn't mind re-rolling that entirely, that would be a control security test there, um, Bashir, not fitness science. I'm sorry. <laughs> have science on them I mean actually that would be a that roll would be a success so we'll just let the dice roll go because that would have been yeah. two successes with that roll so uh, roll me four plus however high her security roll is in challenge dice it would have been a credit and a success a credit and a success a total of three. Oh right because of the focus yep so we got a momentum Okay, one momentum back. I think you're now maxed. <clears throat> okay, and so her secure is full. And, so she, she, and she charged? No, she'd be a nine. She's got a phaser four, or phaser oh. three rifle. Okay, seven and four piercing, which is enough to knock this one on its um, posterior on its thorax. <clears throat> the, Anterior thorax. Yeah. The uh, lights on their suits go dim as they collapse to the ground. Naturally, this attracts the attention of several individuals who are either just at, about to enter the temple or are about to get back to their tent city. Uh, many of them turn and flee to their particular destination. However, some of them cautiously edge towards the Tholians that have been downed. Well, is there any way that we could uh, lock transport on them, Night High? Well, they're in the open. I'd say... Well, Zell can give it a go. Who wants to roll Zell? I, I'll do it. I'll make this roll. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. They have advanced transporters now. Yes. Yes, so you doesn't, do. Doesn't do anything for this, though. It does not, but I'm going to pretend like it does. Okay. All right. Psych yourself up. Um, exactly. So this is going to be a difficulty of three test. Uh, control engineering. Ship will assist with sensors engineering. And here we go. Uh, I'll pop a determination. Ah, okay. Just to make sure. Uh, people are counting on me. Okay, well, the Nighthawk assists, so you've made the roll already. And that's two more successes. Um, yeah, five successes total. So two more momentum, but I think you're already capped. So as the Curious Cations... Uh, investigate their uh, fallen deities, they vanish in a puff of, or in a um, swirling of a dark 
light of dark and uh, that 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 where once there was a glowing you know transporter effect now with the trans advanced transporters it's more of a single flash of light so slightly similar to that of a Q but you know without the whole uh, snarkiness that comes with it but they beam up and are and several of the Cations are now left talking amongst themselves uh, are we going to mind wipe them too uh no I mean if I hate to sound grim, but if things are going to proceed the way that we think they're going to proceed, then it may not even be necessary. Uh, several of the ones who are just going to get back to their camp are make their way to you. Uh, let's see, that would be this one, this one, and this one. There we go. They have no weapons. Aside from a couple of the hand tools that they're wielding, uh, they're wearing cloaks to protect themselves from the wind. And other than that, see, I told you cloaks are in this plant. I mean, <laughs> cloaks have their place. <laughs> not really, but you know. And the eldest, the eldest one, or at least the law, the one with the greatest amount of facial hair, approaches you. Who are you to attack our gods? And he looked. Who? What are you? Alright, well. I didn't want to, but now we gotta men in black these, these people. Now we gotta. I don't wanna have this conversation right now. I wanna avoid a uh, another Scorpion incident. So I said, well, come closer, friend. I don't think. I think you misunderstand. We didn't attack anybody. The darker skinned one who's, um, or darker furred one, whose fur is of a completely different pattern to those, to those others on the mountaintop, steps forward. I, what I say may be heretical, but thank you. They, they were, I believe that they were false gods. The female in the back hisses at him, like literally hisses. And the darker, darker furred one turns back, yowls, turns around. It's what what they have us doing down there is not how gods should treat their worshippers. If you come from a, if you come from the same divine plane that they do, please stop them. And on that note, we're going to cut back to the town, <clears throat> where finally, after much um, hiding in alleyways, uh, parkouring, and you know, avoiding a couple. Uh, with particularly astute noses. Uh, Bashir oh, and Ebrel managed to uh, hide under an uh, hide under a merchant's fruit cart, while Hanara and Ekor make their way into the center of town. Or, um, uh, th yes. Does Hanara recognize the name Serovix? Oh, the um, Negligence. Cerevix. Yeah, no, Cerevix is a completely different name, and after a particularly uh, embarrassing slip-up, I will never name anything close to those things again. But, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, does, does it even sound Tholian? Uh, Cerevix is the name. Cerevix, yes. Um, does, it, does it sound Tholian? It's... Uh, that would be a... Let's, well, let's do a roll of... Now nah, you're already maxed out on momentum. Um, it does. Uh, Hanara would understand that the Tholians do have a more harsher naming scheme with X's and the like. So it is possible to be a that of a Tholian. Uh, however, it is quickly uh, realized that Karavix and the giant spider god statue in the center of town are one and the same. So it is that of a Tholian. Um, 
the Tholian is in uh, in his full exosuit and the daily prayers begin where the villagers are requested to bring forth any material offerings uh, such as gemstones um, rare uh, rare stones um, material and if any of them happen to have children that are of working age that wish to go up uh, and become closer to their gods several bring forth uh, children it seems that there is a at this point there is a cultural pressure on those who have young children who are of, who have just reached working age to go up and worship the gods now is it just the statue or are they the gods here the gods are not here uh, it's just okay. the statue thankfully um, and no recollection in of Tanara and the core of anything like this in Tholian history, religion. Uh, are you mean Cation? Or Cation. Cation. Yeah. Uh, do Hanara or Akor have anything like history, cultural studies, or stuff like that? Akor is very much into the stars. Okay. Um, Hanara does have history, actually. Oh, does she? Okay. Um, so roll a eh, now you're good on momentum already so Hanara there is a brief mention of a Karavix and the spider gods but Cation history makes it sound like a cult uh, rather than that of an organized religion it popped up just before Wassertop lost its top and uh and there are several uh, there were several um, anecdotal inferences of a superstitious population that st that believed that there was that there was a link that by worshipping the spider gods the Cations were punished and so the spider gods were never worshipped again so Nar kind of has a chill thinking about that uh, the uh, finally as the offerings are brought forward uh, Neglish mentions and we have two pilgrims from the northern provinces who have come a long ways to pay their tributes to uh, Karavix and the spider gods Please, what have you brought to offer us? Or what have you brought to offer your gods? Did we bring anything? Well, you could Inara, spend, spend a momentum. Uh, yeah, you, spend a momentum. Yeah. Okay. I was just thinking the same thing. Spend a momentum. Okay, what are you spending the momentum on? Are you spending for an advantage? Uh, in advantage, where Hanar has some uh, tribal jewelry. Okay, uh, that would be two momentum, actually. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. But, Have to. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Fong Kindly. All right, uh, Hanara, you are uh, both Anara and Akor are able to produce something of significance. What that is, I'll leave up to you guys. Laser etched up. No. <laughs> It's so many gifts. This, this rough, 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 rough beaten metal, like a just a tribal bracelet. Okay, and a core. Uh, <laughs> something from the stars. Uh, meteorite. Okay, small, small rare meteorite. Okay, <laughs> those are placed on the altar in front of the spider god. And what is interesting? Um, as you approach, uh, Naglish begins chanting, and several drums begin beating around the city, and as he brings it to a f furious crescendo, and um, he slams his staff on the ground in a mighty thump, 
and all of the offerings disappear in what you two would recognize as a transporter Trans effect. Naglish then says, The spider gods are pleased with your offerings. Please go about your day and know that the spider gods will bring good uh, good weather and a great harvest upon us this this season. They're more powerful than we thought. Than we had been told. And then he coughs like he has a hairball. <laughs> uh -huh. We need to find this prophet and this painter. Okay. I'm up to suggestions. Can you two well, hit the marketplace and possibly yeah. ask around? Thank you, Nuglish, for showing us to the to the ceremony. Um, I, I think our friends would like to go to the market now. Is there another ceremony later in the day? Uh, he, he nods in contrition. This is the greatest of the... Uh, this is the greatest of the ceremonies. It happens once a day at at uh, sun at sun peak. There are several that hold small observances at times when it is more convenient to them, but the whole town comes out for this. It, it was something, but we need to get seek food, seek lodging for the night, and we'll see you here tomorrow. Of course. Fair day to you. And he and to you. takes his staff and walks back where he begins polishing the sta the statue for apparently needlessly, but he does it anyways. Can we get a look I mean, as he's doing that, can I get a look at the staff? I mean, as he's talking behind oh, yes. them. Just a perception check. Absolutely. Kind of uh, insight plus science or engineering, I believe. Insight science, of course. And I have archaeology. Is that archaeology good? would work here? Yes. Yeah. And I'm gonna go ahead, since we have so many, use a moment because I got a weird, funny theory. Well, there's the two successes you need. Um, so, the staff itself, for the most part, is not that interesting. Uh, it appears to be a wooden branch, a long wooden branch, that has been clipped, trimmed, um, buffered a bit. It's the end that's most interesting. Uh, there is a red ruby uh, at its peak with several uh, tendrils. Uh, that run from it to a outer ring, which uh, you believe might be might have more in line with Tholian technology than a religious symbol. Right. It's that's what's activating the transport. Uh, that's what I'm assuming. Okay. Now, uh, Ensign Accor. As you are, as you and Hanara are making your way to the uh, marketplace, uh, Naglish catches up to you. Ah, I am so. S I have. I would like to learn more about your home province, and specifically those you traveled with. I've. I see that you and your uh, friend here are traveling together, but I believe that there are two others who have come with you. And he raises an eye. The gods have told me that they might not be welcome. The handicap that follow? Uh, see. Yes. Well, we know of you two, of course, but we're not entirely sure 
but the gods are more interested in what is an Andorian? Okay. <laughs> Her ears twitch. It's like an Andorian. Yes. Uh, the gods have made mention of it. Uh, particularly that you bring it. Was that one of your... Was that the name that you offered them? I'm sorry, Captain, if you're listening in. I just <laughs> drop the hood and I just look at him and I go, how often do you speak of your gods? In speak the gods. middle of town. <laughs> Okay, we're doing good. Where's the Temple Prime Directive? Luck. I just want to crumple it up and throw it out the window here. Uh, I just... They won't be around for long. So. It's it's my it's my thing, you yeah. know. What can I say? I just like all right, whatever. I was like, how often do you speak to your gods? Well, actually, go. Oh God, not again. Well, that's an Andorian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Naglish leans forward, opens his mouth, his eyes go narrow, and his ears uh, curl back, and he hisses. You're not Cation. You're not gods. What are you? You are an and You're that Andorian fellow. Thing. And the Thorians aren't gods either. <laughs> that is heresy. I will not have anyone beseech or besmirch the divine. They are attempting to save this world. Hanara shoots him. I, oh, no, oh, wait, oh, oh, wait, 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 one second, wait a second. I like, I said, I, I dropped the hood, it's like, who says I'm not a god? Oh, okay. <laughs> Hanara pauses. <laughs> they do. And who, are, and who else to judge the worthiness of gods but other gods? Maybe if we go to your quarters or two inside the temple where we can discuss this. Absolutely not. I will not be consort. I will not consort with false beings of whatever you are. And those okay, Stunner. Okay. <laughs> roll me control. Hadara, go for it. Uh, roll me control <laughs> security. And this is only going to be difficulty one just because of how close that he is. All right, what does Hanara roll? Hanara does it, and that's one mom one momentum for you. I'd say roll challenge dice, but it's not really needed, as Neglish, in mid-rant, immediately loses the desire to stand vertical. Or stay awake, <laughs> for that matter. And, and then we pick him up and march down to, I guess, down to the temple area. We yeah, gotta I get him out of here, sir. I grab the staff. <laughs> And I'll put my I'll put my cloak up back up and grab the staff and as you're picking him up and throwing him over your shoulder and we'll take him to the temple. Okay. Okay. Um, you're at the temple, which thankfully doesn't have many in it at the moment because services have just ended. Um, the shrine to the spider god is still there, of course. Can I see an active, like, as, as we're walking, I want to investigate the staff. Is there like an activation switch or something on it or anything like that? Uh, as you begin to poke and prod at it, um, it begins to speak to you. Oh, okay. Uh, this isn't a voice in your head kind of thing. This is loud okay. enough for everyone within close proximity to hear. Starfleet. Even this far in the past, this is still Starfleet. Leave us be. You are messing with the history of this planet. There is no way we're going to let you do that. Federation planet. The Tholian can ah the th ah the Tholian Empire will expand into this area of space and claim dominion of it. 
the th the Cations will continue to thrive under our protection. We are attempting to save their lives here, not destroy them. If you two were to leave now, history will go on as it does, and these Tholians will die, or these Cations will die. I can't allow you to change their history. Our prime directive says that we can't do it. We're coming for you. The Tholian's directive as well. They hate time travel, but I can see... I. They hate it because they do not know how to twist it to their benefit. I will show them. I will show them how great the Tholian Empire will be. Commander, that sounds like something Karavix says in the stories on okay, now would well, to the future the stories of Karavix would be very similar to I'm megalo assuming... megalomaniacal I was going to say, I'm assuming you're Karavix. <laughs> yes. And who are you? So I can mark it on your tombstone. <laughs> you can keep calling me Starfleet. Fine. <laughs> and with that, the uh, crystal shatters. Oh, good. <laughs> leaving a wooden staff that is absolutely worthless, aside from probably a quarter staff weapon if it needed to be. Nice. <laughs> And on that note, we are going to cut back to the mountaintop, where you guys are currently staring down three individuals. What are your names, friends? As I lower my weapon. I am Shift Boss Kassiri. This is Kavlia. He points to the back. And this is Seraph. And you guys recognize the name Seraph as the dude that did the painting. Oh, he's the one that captures my nice likeness. I'm sorry, what now? <laughs> I said, I said, he's the man that captures my, my likeness. I'm sorry, I have not captured anything. <laughs> you look like you have an artist soul, sir. This is what I mean to say. That's... It's lost in translation. <laughs> Seraph uh, blinks a couple times slowly, opens his mouth wide. This has been a strange day. It's the hands. You can tell by the hands. But yes, I was very curious in this alternate form of thought. Uh, the, the perspective that the spider gods had offered. So I volunteered. Now I'm not allowed to leave. Work us so. until the project is done. But I have seen their, but I it, having seen their results firsthand, it is a project that I am willing to undertake. Do you know exactly what the end goal is of the project of the Spider Gods? Have they told you what you're working towards? Yes, I have seen it. They they have built a mystical shrine in the volcano, and it is literally removing the the lava this volcano will never erupt again well Seraph you strike me as a cultured individual so yes. I may ask I ask you even though it definitely it seems like the spider gods are attempting to give you you and your people some semblance of grace. Do you feel like tampering with nature is the best way to do so? He pauses. It's not too different than, say, a siphoning part of a river into an aqueduct to grow fresh fruit trees. Or do to... you take all of the river, though? Or just a portion of it? A small part? A portion, of course. 
spot. Lava is... These false gods? Lava goes down deeper inside the planets. These... We call these creatures Tholians. They're going to take everything and the planet will die. That... That strikes me. That is not right. I have seen what the shrine will do. He, and he begins to undergo an existential crisis right in front of your eyes. Or what they want you to see it do. Kevlia just sort of... She stomps her foot a couple times. No, this is not right. I did not sign up for... My, I have not shown faith for my beliefs to be questioned now. I will continue to service the... I will shall continue to service the Caravax and the Spider Gods. They are our salvation. If what you say is true and they take more and our planet dies, we will deal with it then. But I have seen the immediate benefits. Can you heal a body when all the, all the blood from the body is gone? No. It's the same with the planet. She shakes her head. That is not for me to decide. That is for the old ones, or that 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 that's for the spider gods. I'm mixing me- I'm mixing mythologies here. Why isn't it your for you to decide? Is this not your home? Don't you care what happens to it? Of course I care. That's why I follow the spider gods. Okay, well, I'm not going to go anywhere with her. <laughs> and with that, she conti- she begins to trudge up the mountain and begin her shift. Mr. Helsing, please, if you would. I shoot her. Okay, uh, roll me control security, please. Difficulty one, just because no one's expecting it, and close range. I hate that value I have. Which value is that? The greater good bounces on a knife's edge and do before all else. But I'm not popping it. So it's only difficulty one? Difficulty one, yep. You know, I gotta hit control and then security instead of security and then the other. I think you can do it both ways. I'm not entirely certain, but eh, you did it. No, that's an R. Never mind. Okay. Well, you hit, and then there's a complication. So that's one momentum for you. I'll let you have the complication. <laughs> okay. After the conversation in Discord today, I feel it's only right. <laughs> <laughs> and about a million challenge dice? Uh, probably more than is necessary. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she goes down hard and knocks unconscious. Um, in doing so, both Seraph and Kasiri will attempt to fight back. And Kasiri is going to attempt a unarmed attack because... On... Oh, on a, probably on Helsing, just because you were the one that shot. So you need to roll an opposed daring plus security, and you just need to beat one success, or meet or beat one success. All right, you meet and beat it, so you can make a melee attack against him or unarmed strike. Okay, and I have martial artist. That'll do it. And I have mean right hook. Mean right hook is dangerous because it makes things lethal. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to use it. So what is that? Six. Hey, man, it sucks, but I can't look hard for her to warn. And I will use a momentum to reroll the zeros. Okay. Okay. That's definitely enough. So basically, uh, from Seraph's perspective, um, Mr. Helsing just fired uh, a lightning from his wand, knocked Cavalier unconscious. Kasiri went to attack him. You dodged nimbly, 
punched him right in the face. Kasiri goes down. Uh, Seraph, at this point in time, goes to his knees and puts his hands over his eyes. Please, no more, no more, no more. If you want to see it, I'll take you, I'll take you. They're okay. Uh, They're just unconscious. Uh, uh, that was lightning from your hands. From I've I've seen the spider god. I've seen the spider gods. The whatever the Tholians. They use similar wands. Come, light. Check, come, but, come check your friend out. Come come with me. Just check check her out. He stands on shaky. You'll feet. see she lives. And he goes down and puts his hand on the back of her neck. Yes, yes, it's still warm. This is the difference between us and the Tholians. He nods his head. Yes, fine. Okay. What do you want? If you want to stop that machine, I can take you to it. So, can you, do you know exactly how many of the spider gods are within the temple? I have all, I have seen five at one time. Now there are three. But there's never been more than five. He shakes his head, his rough cut mane, uh, adding waves to the, uh, uh, adding waves to the effect, no, no more than five. Have you ever actually been below the earth within the temple? I have worked on. I have worked near the shrine, never inside it. That is that is the domain of the spider. That is the domain of the Tholians. All right. Well, I want to attempt to actually calm him down. Okay. Uh, presence plus command. Diplomacy. I never. So, I mean, I'm never going to get my picture if the man doesn't want to paint me. <laughs> Honestly. That is true. It's the hell thing to be painted with a pitchfork and horns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is two success. That is enough. Uh, he takes a couple deep breaths, pa paces in a circle for a few, and finally accepts the fact that whatever situation he is in is beyond his control, so he may as well just ride it out. Listen, I understand that a lot of what's happened to you recently is a cause of very unusual circumstances. But yes. I want to tell you that your initial hunch is correct. These, these spider gods aren't necessarily aren't here to uplift you. They are here to do damage. And to be honest, we do need your help. Now, this isn't going to work if you fear us. And I didn't try it. I don't want you to fear us. If, like you, like Mister, like my like my friend here already said, your friends are fine, and they're going to continue to be fine. But if this is going to work, and we're actually going to save your planet and everybody else that you care about, then we need your assistance, and we kind of need that out of the way. He, no, I want you to come. All right. Well, I'd like you. To, whatever we're going to do next, I'd like it to be something that you accept willingly. He nods, uh, slowly goes over to um, Kavlia and Kassiri's bodies, uh, picks up their uh, hand tools, and attaches them to his belt. He'll take two quick steps to come face to face with you, and you realize that he's a little bit shorter than you. Yes, Cap, yes. I will. I volunteer to help save my planet from whatever these things are. Well, in that case, Seraph, welcome to the team. Now, I want I down at the town. I realize we're running a little late. I kind of want to just rush towards the final scenes here. So, I'm going to spend little use of threat here. Because down here um, as you guys are in the temple and beginning to figure your way around things uh, you realize that inside the 
statue of the Tholian is a very basic primitive sensor array. And I don't and I have enough threat to basically end a scene how I'd like. So I am going to say that the four of you experience the familiar tingles of a transporter beam as you are beamed away from the village. And now we're going to cut back to the Osar top, where the captain, and these two are not here. Okay, what is it that you guys wish to do up top? Onward and downward. And that's the play. Okay. So, uh, inside the temple, uh, there are several. Oh, wait. Oh. I'm sorry. I totally. What? Uh, what exactly are we going to leave these two on the mountainside? I know we're moving on towards the yeah. temple, but if if their homes aren't too far away, I'd actually like to see if we could get them closer there. Okay. Just transport them if possible, or just somewhere to the outskirts of the village. Yep. Just up, you know. Away from the mountain. Okay. Um, Zell is able to tr move their bodies to a more desirable location. Seraph is absolutely dumbfounded. Well, I'd hope that would take place while we were moving oh. towards the okay. mountain top, but I'd yeah. still like to that, promise. Like behind, like behind us? Like behind yeah. us, as we move away, you know? Yeah. I'll tap my tricorder, send some orders. Get these bodies out. <laughs> Gotta clean up the mess. Yeah, come, Seraph. Come this way. Do not look back ever. All right. Entering into the temple itself, uh, above above ground, um, there is a large elevator that goes down deeper into the mountains. You can definitely feel the increasing warmth of the vol of the volcano as you begin to descend into it. <clears throat> Uh, there is an elevator uh, that, thank thankfully, you have waited long enough for the shift change to finalize, and those to go down. Thankfully, there are no more Tholians at this level. Uh, Seraph motions you onto the uh, elevator itself. Uh, he says, it's going to get very hot, but they have seen to it that uh, we Cations are protected from the worst of the heat and the smoke inside. I won't lie, that's surprisingly kind of them. The spider gods protect the future, he says as if reciting a line from a religious text. Uh, that part I'm not so sure about. <laughs> as you guys descend, you enter here. Descending deep into the uh, volcano, deep into the uh, walls of the volcano is a large, it appears at first glance to be made out of some sort of obsidian-like material. Uh, it's black, it reflects the dancing light of the magma, and in the lava and the magma in all sorts of pretty colors. Uh, it's, you know, Thishran, you would see it very similar to that of a sort of an anti-disco ball. Whether or not this intrigues or offends you is up to you. I mean, I'm always interested in something new. All right. Uh, it is about a... Uh, it is a uh, six-story structure. Uh, most of the Cations that are working on it are on the top. Are on the top structure... They appear to be putting some f uh, fine work on the source of the uh, blue light, which is beaming upwards. Uh, you don't need your tricorders to see that there are two more Tholians nearby. And But your tricorders do tell you that there are several other Starfleet officers present, mainly those who were sent to the village. And in what direction are they relative to us? Uh, they are they are within the structure itself. Uh, I should say at this point, um, Bashir, Commander Bashir, Ikor, 
Ibrel, etc., you find yourselves on a transporter pad. There is a particularly, well, uh, he is a taller individual than the Tholian guards that the captain has thus far stunned. And his armor is modified with a, well, at first glance it would appear to be some sort of shoulder-mounted array of some sort. He looks mm. at you. You should not interfere, Starfleet. You could have just ignored this. Let let history play out anew. Starfleet would not have even missed the Cation species. I would. A, a core and Hanara, I'm pretty sure, take offense to this. Yeah, a little bit. Silence. <laughs> what? Okay, so I look at him and just there, there's two of them or just him right here with the transport? Uh, him. Just him? Yeah. Alright, so <laughs> I just want to do this just because I can. Uh oh. I slam the staff down on the ground and run you fools! <laughs> He looks at you as obviously not catching the reference. <laughs> and how far away is he away from Hanara? Um, We're on a transporter pad right in front of him. Not too far away. Can Hanara jump him? Uh, I was going to hit him with the staff. That's what I, I, I want to go for. Uh, <laughs> Hanara, as you leap forward, you run full force into a force field. Good. <laughs> Did you really think that I would not have come prepared for your most basic of responses? He's brighter than the average Tholian. You should... With... You don't understand the brilliance. Really? You're monologuing? Explain it. If this volcano does not erupt, Cation society will not advance. They will continue to fight amongst each other, ignoring their society as a whole. And then, as our text say, yes. And then when the th then the th they a civilized society was a great threat to will be a great threat to the Tholian expansions. But now. We don't. We will not have to worry about this. The Tholian Council will understand that I was right to do this. And this. How long have you been oh. here? Too long. I have not been able to get out of this accursed suit in about ten years. You must smell bad. <laughs> How would the Tholian Empire realize it's a good thing when he's in the past? <clears throat> so their future selves won't really know. I was going to say, blink of an eye. They say, all right, what you're doing is wrong. I agree that I like to save this, as many people as I can, but that's not the way history plays out. We have to let things go. We have no idea what the consequences that you can possibly bring to this whole system. Enough. I have plotted the mathematics of time. I know precisely how it's going to play out. I have seen it. Did you carry the one when you did your calculations? Silence, furball. And He's talking to you, Winston. And at this point, uh, Captain and friends are now down at the main entranceway. Uh, main, uh, the main pathway into the shrine, Black Obsidian structure, whatever you want to call it. Can they hear us over open mic? I'm, well, I guess you still have an open com, com link, so yeah. Or 
Um, but being in the force field, I didn't know if that would have it come out. They haven't apparently dampened that stuff because the GM didn't have enough threat for that complication. GM basically nice. spent all the threat to get you here. So if you want to give me more, please. Well, <clears throat> no. <laughs> all right, uh, Captain. This is playing out. This conversation is playing out on over comms as your commander is trying to negotiate with Captain Crazy Pants. <laughs> okay. Oh, I mean, I've, I've, I've played bad holo novels like this on the holodeck, and uh, typically it, it ends in a relatively secure way, but at least since we're back in time, I don't really want to chance that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Helsing, is... Hi, sir. Make sure we can go get a angle on Miss, Mr. Crazy Tholine over there. Uh, is there, uh, Mr. Thishan, uh, Zobat, is there any way for us to remotely disable the force field? I will take a look. Insight engineering, please. And Zobat okay. can assist. Or any, well, people behind force fields can't assist, but. <laughs> um... I mean, they did say they've been here. This man's been here for 10 years. So I would assume yeah. some structural failures may have you know, some heat dissipation, yeah. something. Yeah, entirely possible. Let's find out. What's the difficulty? Uh, difficulty of two. Okay. And that's one from Zobet. Cha-ching. And three's from Thishran. So two more momentum for you guys. <clears throat> well, uh, Thishran, uh, any great... Th so there is a structural thing with most Tholians is that there is a... They seem to have a control node, which is pretty much standard, but their systems seem to require or have multiple redundancy uh, access points just in case the first one fails uh, due to the harsh environment that Tholians live in. So naturally you are able to find a several different ways to that could be accessed to disable the force field, either through force or through uh, someone at a terminal. All right. Oh, not a problem, Captain. I can I can go through one of the uh, side ports and uh, get get it done. All right, then. Make sure you could uh, make your way to this terminal without arousing any suspicion. Uh, Miss Null, go with the uh, no, go with the Shran and make sure you could cover his approach. For the rest of us, the rest of you guys, you're with me. Let's make sure he hi to our Tholian friend and let's organize a jailbreak. Make sure that whatever you actually manage to deactivate the force field, Mr. The Shran, nothing else can go wrong. We don't want to set off the volcano prematurely while we're still inside it. Got it. No roasting us alive. Very important. Counting on you. All right. I don't feel like dying here today yet. <laughs> I like my life. So do I. <laughs> All right. I guess uh, Noel and I are going on a secret mission. Okay. Uh, so if Noel and the Shran could please, actually just one of you, probably Noel, uh, someone roll me fitness security to see how well you go stealthy. Uh, this is going to be opposed by their uh, insight security. Does anybody have no up? I do if they don't. I do not, so... Yeah, yeah I, I closed it. it. And she has covert operate or infiltration now. Well, that would work. Well, um, she did not beat their uh, role. So, sadly, um, Miss Noel is... As uh, you, Noel and Thashran work their way along the exterior of the shrine, attempting to reach one of the secondary control nodes, uh, two of the Cations who are busy working uh, are quite startled and screech. And they th you attract the attention of the Tholian troopers. Well, that is decidedly not optimal. Sorry about that, Commander. So, uh, they are going to calm Karavix 
and Karavix interrupts his monologue. Looks like your rescuers are here. What a shame. I guess this mountain is going to blow up after all. All these years wasted. Oh well. If I could take some Starfleet out, that'd be a plus. Yeah, ten, ten years in a suit? Wasted. Hmm. If a Tholian could shrug, it makes a sound as if it does. I will. If I am, if I cannot prevent this volcano from erupting, at least I will attempt to minimize its destruction, destructiveness when it does. And he goes back to a machine, to a console by the force field. Anyways, uh, the Tholian troopers are going to be engaging Noel and the Shran. So. Good guys, go first. All right. Uh, are they between us and the controls? Uh, adjacent. Uh, no, they're coming perpendicular. Perpendicular. Uh, I'm just trying to think if I should try to take them out or if I should try to get an ult to just keep their attention while I try to handle the force fields. Uh... Let me shoot. You do the engineering stuff, sir. All right. And they're coming from separate directions, so an area attack will not hit both. I should make make not note of that. She'll got the one on the on the left. Okay. We'll call him red. The other one we'll call blue. And she'll use one of the momentum. <clears throat> That's a hit. Glad I use that momentum. Yes, indeed. She is only eight challenge dice. Oh, only eight? Oh. Uh, charge with piercing. Okay. That is eight with a piercing of one. Okay. It takes it. Um, however, they are immune to pain. So it will push through whatever injury they have but yeah he is not happy um, where are their character sheets they are here yes. okay so uh, red is going to fire back red is going to use its pistol actually it's an automatic piercing two. Oh, of course, because of the rifle, correct? Because uh, it has the rifle, is accurate in charge. Oh, where did I find it? Now I know that accurate. Oh, charge. Uh, when you charge, you can pick area, intense, piercing two, or vicious one. Oh, piercing two. Right, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. so two piercing. Why did I think? Eh. Definitely. There's um, martial artist does an extra damage for every effect, and the area does an extra target for every effect. So yeah. Oh oh sorry, piercing two. Oh so that means it ignores two points of resistance for each effect. Correct. Okay, that's it. That's why I got confused. Okay, so uh, it is still up, but it is not yeah. happy. So it is going to attempt a retaliation. So control security. Security. Two. Now well, it will hit you, and that will be six challenge dice. And it has a vicious one weapon, which means that that is a grand total of ten stress. Uh, no, four plus four effects. So eight stress damage to Miss Noel. And we're in armor, and that's resistance two. Mm -hmm. So then six. Uh, that is, sadly, you will still take an injury. Yeah, I'll so, pop the determination. Okay. Just remember, if you take another injury, that's it. You die. Yep. Okay. Pop the determination to carry on. Cool. Need some help, Commander. So, um, okay. So it's me now. Yep, it's you, Thestran. All right. Uh, 
I'm going to run and uh, try to take down the force fields um, ah. and hope that Noel makes it. Okay. Uh, daring plus engineering, please. All right. Uh, I'm also going to pop my determination. Okay. Um, better be fast than perfect for oh. this. All right. And because I have no threat left, I can't actually increase the difficulty or any of that. So it's just a difficulty of two. So, so you automatically uh, succeed. Now we just have to figure out by how much. Yep. So that's four successes. So two more momentum. Okay. So operating it as one would operate a hot pot without oven mitts, uh, you are able to bring down security, which uh, now allows basically everyone to go nuts so welcome to the end game where so i'm going to finish up the round between the tholians and then everyone is going to jump in and which point we are going to enter a bit of a t countdown scenario where people have to figure out what the heck is going on and how to stop it so he's gone he's gone all right, Tholian, this other Tholian trooper is going to attempt to shoot Noel. Uh, nope, wrong roll. Let's do control security. <clears throat> That's not enough. Uh, the shot goes wide. And that is everyone's turn, I believe. So, we'll now do the following. Everyone gets a turn except for Seraph, because holy crap, I'm not. Why would Seraph be joining into this absolute monstrosity of a weirdness thing? Okay, so that was that, but. Now, round of combat is bad guys go first, unless one of you wants to try to take control of initiative. I don't know if you, um, anybody has. Now, if we take control of initiative now, the I next can't. round would we go first, or would? Uh, no, next round I believe would. You're just delaying the inevitable. Wah ha ha ha. As I say, because I can do call to action. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I have a quick action too. So. Mine's call to action. Mine's the command thing where it's like I can give someone first spot. Ah. Or something like that. Okay. Uh, can someone give Loxley their determination? Uh, that I can. Be, that would be a captain thing. All right. That's a CO thing. And I most definitely shall. If necessary. Okay. But there's nothing. We, we, we technically can't. Because we're in a force field. Aren't Not we? anymore. Um, okay. There is the. Or the Shran was able to deactivate the force field. And I mean, uh, determination to null. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, overcome. She's saying, you know, under fire, force fields down. Need a little motivation, Cap. Well, I'm gonna say. You didn't travel seven hundred years into the past, so you could so you could dip out on me now. <laughs> okay, so is that Noel seizing seizing the uh, first round or first action? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. All right, Noel, do your thing. Make it good. Yeah, I should say due to proxim just due to proximity because Lord knows I can't find a good battle map. So the Pierce. You mean the piercing? Uh, no, I was going to say just due to how things are laid out, um, the only ones currently in range are the Tholian troopers. Right. Yeah. And she's shooting the one that she had shot previously. Understood. And using one of the um, momentum. Mm -hmm. Or two, because we are on a time thing. Yeah. Or two. <clears throat> well, that's 
uh, three successes. So, yep, yeah, that's one momentum back. Or is that six because of the determination? No, I didn't pop the determination. He just gave me the determination. Oh. So now if she gets hit again, she's not going to die. Ah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. That way she can still stay up. Roll your dice. Okay. Uh, which, uh, so that, so you're doing the piercing thing, one, so that is... Piercing. piercing eight. Yeah, piercing eight, so four damage. Cool. Did you say cool. it's momentum? Well, yeah, I used three momentum to shoot. Okay. Because we used... How many dice did I do? Yeah, I did four dice. Yeah, so that's three momentum gone. Um, we got one momentum back. Yep. So I'll use that momentum to reroll. Okay. Got to put one of them down. Okay. There it goes. Seven with two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten piercing. Twelve yeah. piercing. Yeah. So this one collapses in a heap of exoplating. And it ceases movement. The other, uh, let's see. So that was your turn. Uh, where is that? God, there's a lot of people here. It's in the core. Nope. There it is, right at the bottom. Okay. First up um, is going to be Caravax. Because he has all these individuals still on a transporter pad. Uh, the antennae um, draw power and he attempts an area attack against all of you on the transporter pad. And did I close his character sheet? Nope, he's just lost amongst the everything else. That is going to be control security. Well, and the last two thread I have, I'm going to reroll that one d20 because I want this to hit. Because I want one. That'll hit. And then that deals not a lot of attack. Well, okay, it deals some. That'll deal five points of damage to all of you on the transporter pad. And oh, they don't have the combat armor. They do not, no. So yeah. you are all either going down due to injury, or you all have to blow your determination to avoid it. Hernaro will blow his determination. He yeah. wants blood. Going down is ill advisable at this moment in time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's see. How does one when a character uh, costs two momentum or spending their determination? Okay, cool. Yep. Fair enough. Cool. Okay. Yeah, so you could blow to momentum to also avoid the injury but yeah that results in a complication but the determination will work so who blew their determination and who's going down hanara blew his okay uh locksley nah core doesn't need to oh, okay. okay so core is going down okay Loxley? Maybe? Loxley's going to blow it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, yeah. pop it. And Bashir? I'm going to use my two. I'm going to use the two momentum. Okay. To stay up. All right. So you're now out of momentum. Uh, you're up, but the action of doing so. So you are going to be... I'm going to say that because... Ah, you shielded your face with one of your arms. So if you're going to try attacking with anything requiring two hands, that increases the complication. 
or that increases the difficulty by one. Okay. Okay. Um, that is his turn. So who go? Who wants to do something next? And I will say that Sengral, Helsing, and uh, Zabit do have a shot on Karavix, but not on the uh, troopers. You can spend your minor action to get to sh uh, within shooting range of the troopers, but in doing so, you can't hit Karavix. Can um, Thushran hit the trooper? Uh, Thushran can definitely hit the trooper. I can try. I'm not great at shooting, but sure. Use your pick. So, is that going to get through the armor? I don't know. I think it has if vicious. You, it has vicious, yeah. You, no, but if you you aim, well, do the charge and piercing, you'll get through the armor if you yeah. get any effects. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking, like, I'm better at melee, but I don't think my melee was going to get through there. Uh, so, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, just my control is not great, but uh, I'm still probably better off using the the phaser rather than my pick, yeah. I assume. Yeah, All right. and you're, uh, so... you're out of momentum, too, I believe, unless that one came from something recent that I wasn't paying attention to, but I, yeah, oh, I no. think we're out. Yeah, yeah we're out. Yeah. Okay, uh, control security there, the Shran. All right. That is not enough, I'm afraid. Your shot goes wide. All right. Okay. Um. Oh, you could spend that action to aim. You could spend your minor to aim, in which case you could re-roll that zero. Oh, okay, sure. Because I'll that one. Uh, phaser rifles do have the accurate ability. Okay. So I'll re-roll one of them. And that will hit. So roll me. Oh, just let me. Yeah, the first one wouldn't have hit anyways. Okay, so roll me eight challenge dice, please. That's three mm -hmm. plus two piercing, or four with two piercing, I should say. Yeah. That's not a heck of a lot of damage, but it still is enough to cause a simmering hole through their suit where hot gashes gases uh, are beginning to leak through i'm so, trying to shoot from around the terminal mm -hmm. so that one is out of order this one and now it is its turn it attempts to shoot you well that's not fair well you know who says tholians play fair okay this post security dice wow not even close Oof. apparently it is more concerned with the steam rising from its uh, suit than it is dealing with you who wants to go next I do I do okay I'd like to take my I'll take a minor action and I'll move to go support the Shran all right <clears throat> and then take aim at um the Thalian troopers that are firing at him and the so missile. doing a minor action d doesn't allow you to use the aim i'm afraid that's fine yeah okay i i mean yeah that's sure i mean of course right yeah still gonna go ahead and fire at them sure thing Well, that's not enough, I'm afraid. As the captain's shot goes wide. Uh, so I'm out of people that can do things, so it's basically up to you guys. Um, Hanara wants to get in a good kick, a good pouncing attack on Karavix. Oh, unarmed strike. Fantastic. Probably won't do much. It's just for personal satisfaction. Oh, nothing wrong with that. Kitty vengeance. <laughs> Kitty vengeance. Okay, so that's nope. that. 
Uh, this is an opposed roll, so jumps up. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Daring security. Let's see how he does that. Well, you hit. Congratulations. Uh, so, roll. Uh, unarmed is two plus security? Uh, one plus security. One. Yeah. So, six total. Wow. Okay. Kitty mad. Kitty mad. Okay, so not only do you deal uh, eight points of damage, um, because of the knockdown effect, I have no threat left to spend to oppose it, so Karelix yeah, is knocked down and not happy about it. And her arm makes a strike and then pounces off. She's like, okay. point, point. Okay. Now anybody can shoot. Anybody can shoot. All right. Our turn still? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You still have okay. a lot of people. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I am going to make my way to the control panel. Okay. And can I can I get control of this lava device? Um, this is going to be an insight plus engineering, please. Uh, difficulty okay. of two. Insight. <clears throat> Do we have anything? Do we have? What are we on? Oh, we we're out of. You're out of everything. Yeah. Of thing. Yeah. Everybody's out of crap. I got nothing to back it up. So give it a shot. See if I can figure this out. There you go. Uh, your. Uh, sadly, Tholian uh, engineering eludes you. <laughs> uh, your dials, or the Tholians use inter or uses crystals, and the readouts are just. You have no idea what you're seeing here. Okay. Fair That's enough. Thank you. Bashir's turn. Who's next? Hel uh, Helsing. Helsing will shoot. Okay. Helsing does shoot. Uh, who's he shooting? Um, Karavix. Okay. Uh, because he is prone, that means that you... That's only difficulty one now for control engineering. Or control okay. security. And we'll do the piercing. Okay. That's one momentum to you guys. And another stupid amount of challenge dice from Helsing. Nine. So six with five, or with eight, nope, ten piercing. Uh, considering how much damage uh, Hanara did him, yeah. The life support in his uh, suit blinks uh, red for critical before fading out. And Karalix moves no further. Karavix moves no further. Commander Lushran! <laughs> uh, the Shran is still pinned down. Uh, yeah, they've already they've already shot this round, I think. Yeah, they have. It's still uh let's see. Oh yeah, the Shran's gone. So uh Loxley and Z Zobat. Yeah. So Loxley and Zobat is and Karavix out. Or just knock down. He's out. He's out. Out. out, out. Um, can Loxley get a move on the Tholian trooper? Absolutely. From the center, she can basically shoot wherever she wants. And she will do a piercing. Okay. Well, that's uh, three successes, so one more momentum. I think you're now at two. Right. Eight uh, challenge dice eight for challenge her. Dice. Six plus eight piercing is enough to take him down. And with that, combat is over, but the countdown remains. We can actually say tango down on this. <laughs> okay, so... Um, Ensign Accor is injured, but, and I don't think she needs to be stabilized. I don't think that's a thing right now. I'm not worrying about it. Anyways, 
So, they're out. And who's doing what now? Um, that's what I'm yelling. Strand, get over here. <laughs> Help me with this. All right. I book it over there. Okay. Um, insight engineering for you, Mr. Thishran. And oh, I'm only sis. going to make it a difficulty one because you've already figured out their systems. All right. I'm going to assist still. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're welcome to assist. So that's two successes from Th Thishran. So you guys get two more momentum. That's what I want. Uh, so, uh, Thishran, what is going on is they were attempting to material or quote unquote beam the magma out, um, out through time for what whatever reason, back to Tholian space. They were doing it at a controlled um, flow. But he's basically opened the floodgates, and this volcano is draining immediately. If this wasn't going to kill like many, many people, I would almost admire how, what they managed to do here. Uh, nevertheless, I should probably find a way to stop that. Okay. Um, this is going to be a daring plus engineering task. Difficulty of three. Okay... Can I assist with daring science? Uh, daring science would work, yes. Difficulty three. Uh, I'll probably burn through momentum to get character dice for this. Go for it. Considering how important this one is. Want to give GM threat? No, that's all right. Aww. We still got the momentum. Uh, daring plus engineering. Well, there we go. Wow. Nice. Six. Okay. Yeah, so six successes makes for a significant <coughs> amount of work done. Yeah. Um, so you are able to uh, stop the literal stream. And the problem is... It's now causing a reversal of it. <laughs> so the lava that was immediately filling out of the volcano is now filling rapidly. <laughs> well, Captain, good news <laughs> is I reversed it. Um, the bad news is I reversed it. <sighs> okay. Are you sure? of, uh, yeah, this is going to set it off, Captain. Is there no way to actually stop this, this process? You, you can't make it stay in place? Uh, is there a way for me to stabilize this? Uh, no, it either has to leave or it has to come. No can do, Captain. It's, it's got to either come in or go out. Ah, uh, I guess this is my predestination paradox. All right, then. Everybody out. We evacuate. Sarah, do we the <laughs> Can we try to get to the village and get people out? No. One thing at a time. Let's get out of the volcano first. Um, because Can... there are several Cations down here, including Seraph, who are just dumbfounded at everything that's just happened. Yeah. All right, let's book. Okay. Um... So if you're going to try to corral the crowd or corral Seraph, this is going to be a daring plus command test. Captain, you should do this. Yeah, seems like it. You're oh, the one that's got the uh, unless you want the picture to change, <laughs> <laughs> you better let me do it. Okay. Uh, daring command. Daring difficulty. Command, uh, difficulty. Uh, it's going to be a scaling difficulty. So however many successes you get indicates basically the success or how many folks you affect. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, buy an extra die. Stupid question. Can I assist? Um, sure. Start corralling people. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. So that's one success from uh, Sengral. What about uh, Bashir? On it. 
right. come on. Does the captain still have his determination after giving it away? Because she never used it. Well, I mean, if she never used it, I'd assume I'd still have it. Yeah, you probably still do. Then I'll go ahead and uh, spend it. Okay. Let's uh, use... All life is connected in more ways than one. Consider your implications are. Yeah. Well, quite literally, yeah. Uh, everybody's life is on the is on the line right now. Yep. And I'll go ahead and what's can I reroll both those arrows? Yes, you can. You can reroll as many dice as you want. Nice so. <clears throat> Okay, can I burn my value? What value are you burning? <laughs> oh, come on now. Never forget the past. <laughs> well, I'll be I'll be a kind Jim and just say those are still zeros. Uh, my, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so basically your cajoling and carousing will only get Seraph and a few of them to move in the amount of time that's needed. But uh, several of uh, all of you manage to limp your way to the elevator as you begin to ascend far slower than you'd like. But as you look down, uh, you see the magma is rising and slowly engulfing the dark uh, shrine. And question, what are you doing with the Tholians? I like, oh, if we could carry them, I'd like to carry them okay. and we'll try to get to a transport site later. There's enough of you guys. I, I mean, Tholians are damned heavy being about 500 pounds of rock each but there's enough security officers to be unceremonious with them drag them by their feet so their heads bounce yeah pretty much as you reach the peak of the mountain um everything be is shaking things are beginning to fall apart the temple is constructed in such a way that the uh, light, the ah, the light that was emitting is has gone out, and the temple begins to collapse in and among itself. Uh, Vaid, at this point on the ship, you realize that the magma has immediately returned, and the whole mountain is beginning to undergo a seismic event. Captain, this is. Yep, it seems like the future is here. The volcano is erupting, and I need you to get get us out of here. Yes, sir. Okay. And you know what? Fuck it. DTI be damned. Is there any way that we could actually mass transport the Cations out as we're transporting? Um, that is going to be a very difficult challenge. Um, I will see. It's okay, we got a lot of momentum. I'm just going to max it out at uh, <laughs> difficulty five, if you can do it. I am. I just want to see if we could move at least the ones immediately here at the temple. Okay. Uh, just a way to save Women and children, maybe. Women and children. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh. Difficulty five. Um, so Zell, we know how Zell rolls. Ship assists, or Zell control engineering. Ship assists with um, structure engineer or sensors engineering. And let's see if we can pull five successes. Right, somebody else will make this roll. Yeah, no, I'm the one that wants it. Uh, I don't want to do it. Does I think Zell still has her determination. So, Nighthawk roll success. Okay. Want me to roll Zell, or someone else wants? Her? I just got her pulled up. <laughs> so, what are we doing? It's control. Control engineering, and I think she still has her determination. Okay. <clears throat> And, and her value. To... Yeah. Yep. All right. So I'm going to buy. Where are we at on momentum? Uh, you have three momentum right now. So it's that's just two enough. I will take them all. Okay. And focus. You only need one. And that. So one, two, three, four, five, six successes in total. 
Yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Captain Singral, all of you. Uh, Zell literally pushes the button that says activate every single transporter at once. All um, into a freaking. Um... Oh, is that going to do uh, if we just put him in the shuttle bay? Yeah, that's pretty much it. So anyone who is not part of the immediate way team is going to find themselves in the cargo bays. Nice. Fine. Okay. Ah, wrong button. Copy. Tokens. And you find yourselves on... The transporter pad. Uh, Vaid, you and Ra you and Rani uh, stand, and the DTI agents stand witness as a uh, silently from the surface, what was once a sort of a cloudy day is clear as a shock wave the size of several bombs go off, clearing the clouds for a a distance of several hundred miles in radius. It starts small but quickly billows as thick black smoke and ash begin to enter the atmosphere, several metric tons of them. And <clears throat> as the and not even the DTI agents are able to stand stoic as history sadly has to repeat itself meanwhile down on the transporter pad Seraph just stands stock still <laughs> for a second and then collapses to his knees and enter and begins um, genuflecting in front of the captain. You are the true gods. Those are the fake ones. You are the true gods. You saved me. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I said that's... in Discord, when someone calls you God, <laughs> you say yeah. Well, it's nice <laughs> of you to acknowledge that I saved your life. Nobody here is a god. In any case, you're here now. And unlike the Tholians, I just can't let all you people die. It's not in my nature. Thank you. Thank you. I am most grateful. Well, go ahead and uh, take him to sick bay to... Uh, normally, I'd do the... And I make a motion with my hands to... to <laughs> yeah, his memory, but we can't really do that now since he's here. So, just trade him for any injuries. At this point, I mean, it seems like he needs his memory, regardless. So, just take him to the sick bay and get him cleaned up. I was going to say, the rest of them, I would like to find a very nice little colony far away from all lava. <laughs> and we'll beam them back, because I don't want them interacting with anyone here except for you know, what they've already seen. I'm not going to try to mind raise the entire village. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we get, they don't see a lot and we just, they pop up into a different village. Tell it's going to fuck with their heads, but. <laughs> Let's do a quick briefing room as everyone is, because <laughs> I'm not having conversations between DTI folks on the bridge and <laughs> senior staff between three different locations. Briefing room to figure out what the hell. Nope, wrong briefing room. That's zero yeah, station. Yeah, I was going to say. Conference room. Uh, so, conference room is there. We have the two DTI agents who are, of course, present. So, you still have them in. Uh, this is taking place right after the mass beam out as everyone is figuring out what the hell is going on. Oh, there's two Scullies. Where's Mulder? There's Mulder. Mulder puts his feet up on the table, leans back. Well, Captain, I gotta hand it to you. At least the volcano erupted, and you saved the your you saved your eventual portrait maker. I mean, I figured if I was just gonna if we're gonna mess with history, I might as well 
try to attempt to keep some of those aspects intact. Scully looks at her pads, and by my rough ass, and by my, by my calculations, we have 222 Cations currently on board, one of which is going to have to be sent back down, where he will contribute to history, as intended. The others, she sighs, will have to be reintegrated with the 24th century. I find it unfortunate as much as you do, but honestly, both as a Starfleet captain, I just can't stand here and allow a bunch of aliens come back in time to this planet just to kill all these people. Maybe the volcano was supposed to, to blow up the way it was normally without outside intervention. And it's still, I mean, maybe we were supposed to save these people regardless. I don't have those answers. And when I came to you, neither did you. So I'm going to uphold the values of the Federation to the best of my ability. Nope. Maybe that means I, I'm not. Maybe that means I'm unable to make the hard choices, but at least I still have my conscience intact, and these people still have their lives. Uh, the Department of Temporal Investigations, temporal uh, jurisdiction, individuals who are pulled out of the past and experience the future tech and, and experience technology of the present day or of the future are either required to then be integrated into the future, or at least the max level of technology they have witnessed. That pretty much says it, Captain. The only individual that we have beam, have to beam down is this Seraf chap. And I'll, I'll make sure Seraph has enough modifications to the events that he's taken, that, that he's seen over the past, what, 24 hours or so, to still give, make history Stay on the right track. I appreciate that, Captain. Now, I need to go and prepare the temporal calculations for the trip back. This time I have to modify it for six ships. This is going to be a lot of math. And with that, Mulder just sort of sighs, stands up, walks out, leaving you with Scully. Uh, she seems kind of awkward and says, yes, good job, Captain. And then she follows in his wake. Now, in the interest of time, because we are way over a typical session length, and I apologize for that, um, I will skip all of the necessary roles and stuff and... We're going to cut back to the sign of the time vortex. Where? I, I do, before yep. we te temporarily go back, mm -hmm. um, I would like to get their samples of, or any sort of samples or whatever from the vortex itself to of study course. later. Of course. You know, my thing. <clears throat> okay. Was there any uh, raw, like, ash from the destruction or something that we could potentially gather and create into a uh, gift of, of sorts. Sort. Uh, you are able to beam several samples of obsidian and other pyroclastic materials. We just got 223 cats for her. <laughs> She's <laughs> going to become a crazy cat lady. <laughs> 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 oh, that is true. Uh, <laughs> surprise! <laughs> it's a heck of a litter box. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh man. Oh boy. <sighs> I'm glad you went back to the gift. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm really that 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 tops. Yeah. I'm glad you did. That's uh -huh. great. The Tholians in your brig are conscious. Um, only the three that were in the volcano were, sal were saved, if I recall correctly. Or did you beam the other two out as well? I think we beamed everybody. Okay. So. All right. Yep. Yeah, so, 
Yep, yeah, so you have 222 crystal creatures, or nope, you have 222 cats and five crystal creatures. <sighs> okay, and the, the six of, uh, it takes another day or so of fleet-wide maintenance and calculations, but you are able to traverse the time tear. It's a lot more difficult now because without a tether keeping it open the tear is beginning to destabilize and close on its own and it begins to and it's like swimming upstream but the lot of you are able to make it back to present day and as soon as you are emerge uh, you are held by the USS Archangel. On screen. Captain, it is good of you to see you again. And I see that you have rescued... I see that you have rescued our fleet. And I don't think future... Present has changed. Well, that's agreeable to hear. This is going to be a very interesting report. Yep. Pot, and I'll see you at my court martial. Well, he cocks actually, his techni head. technically, if I make Athens, I don't think anyone's going to read this report. The a agent or ah agent Mulder leans forward. Technically, everything has happened in the past, and we are now past the. Um, we are now past the loop. I mean, the statute of limitations. The Cations are not going to like this new version of history and might not take too well to Starfleet's actions, but, well, that was either them or leaving them to the Tholians. Captain so, I mean, if their options are die to the Tholians or get saved by Starfleet, personally, if I was them, I would take the second option. Agreed. That is an agreement. However, I will have to see what, um, uh, what, uh, what, uh, the, what facilitator Dolmer has to say about this, but it was definitely an interesting adventure. Captains, as our direct observations are no longer required, Investigator Scully and I shall remove ourselves from the observer status and shall retire to our quarters where we will prepare our reports. Now, I should say that there is another scene on the bridge. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Helsing. Uh, yes, you're noticing a uh, through one of the um, breaches that has not been fully sealed yet. Uh, you are noticing uh, there's an intruder. Uh, it is a Togalau intruder, which is very difficult because Togi is currently standing on the bridge. So we have Togalau incoming. We have a Tog. I'm sorry. We have a, a Togi's right here, dude. We have a garden coming in through the tear, sir. Oh. Ah, oh, intruder alert. Shields up. Okay. We are going to cut to down. Yeah, Lieutenant, scan ship. Mm -hmm. We'll go to the hallway. I don't seem to have the hallway here. I thought I did. I don't. Okay. We're just going to use the bridge and pretend that we're on the hallway. Let's use Mess Hall. Mess Hall's a fun one and a large enough set. There's a... <laughs> okay, so... What we have is Commander, Hel uh, Commander Helsing, you and a couple of the security guards immediately head down to the Mess Hall. As soon as I get all the characters in place... Helsing, a couple other security officers, whomever you want, 
and what you see is Togi sitting at a bar, or sitting at one of the tables, absorbing the liquids of a drink that has been dumped on the table, as is his custom, by Woolher. Togi looks up. This garden remembers you. You are Commander Liam Helsing. Yes, I am. Hmm. This garden. How? This garden had instructions to seek out the USS Nighthawk upon the upon the detection of a temporal anomaly over the planet that it had called its home. So, Helsing the Bridge, Captain, can you and Togi come to the mess hall? Right away. Oh, I'm going with. <laughs> Bashir, Sengral. Prashan, you might want to come up as well. And Togi. And why not? Let's have the Shran. Yep. And Vaid. And... He is daddy. He is daddy too. <laughs> Togi. Um, a... The lot of you arrive. Uh, the two Togis look at one another. Captain, you had requi- you had asked this garden to leave a seedling of itself. <sighs> I... In a roundabout way, I did. I mean, I think I specifically asked to to see if you can maintain a garden that will at least on on the planet that we can identify in case we needed to return in a number of centuries. But yes, I did. This pardon me, are you are six hundred years old? Yes, this garden has thrived. It has had to uproot and rehome on several occasions, adapting to life in the new planet. Uh, Once once the local technology had advanced to a significant degree, this garden had to leave the planet, and so it dispersed into its upper atmosphere, where it could wait. Well, to be honest, I appreciate it, but... (laughs) I didn't intend for you to wait so long. I, I thought we could plant... <laughs> that when I... I mean, you certainly do take my orders to a specific degree, and for that I'm thankful. This garden does a ba- This garden has memories of a kindness from the Garden of the Nighthawk, and so it felt t- it necessary to repeat, or to pay back in kind. As it does so, it begins to sort of disintegrate into its component um, spores as this togi, as your togi, moves into it and absorbs it. Oh, okay. And grows in size before shrinking back down to its normal size as it sheds off. This garden has had several experiences, I believe is worth noting, in historical logs. I shall. This garden shall begin entering it. Tell you, I appreciate the intense measures that you went through to fulfill my request in any capacity. I apologize profusely, but I suppose. I mean, it's probably stupid to say now, but time just got away from us. And on that note, I think it's a good way to end the session. So. <laughs> It has been a long one, enough for that, I apologize, but it was a good... I wanted to start Season 3 off with a bang, and I think we did. Literally. Literally. So, (laughs) (laughs) So, I'd like to thank my players for playing, my watchers for watching, and I will see you guys uh, next week, because thanks to all that's going on, we will be doing weekly games, although not every game is going to be this long or this epic. Some will just be more (laughs) slice-of-life stuff. But see you guys next week. Bye-bye.